What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter! And we are live. It's episode 111 of Have A Word, one of the most popular British comedy podcasts in the game, available YouTube and audio. And I'm here with uh, my co-host, Adam Rowe, one of the leading lights in UK and European comedy. Stars Adam. exfoliating. Fucking hell. I knew there was a different you about something about you. Yeah. I just you, As I walked in today and you were there smashing a subway, I was like, Adam is glowing and i've stopped i've stopped biting my fingernails as well two big things to cover here but yeah i was getting flaky skin and my beard very nicely said that looks fucking horrible where? start exfoliating where flaky skin where like just dry skin on my face oh have you not got a a, a regime now no i know I have. you have since december yeah it was fucking great yeah so i have as well now but i don't have to do any of it my missus just as for me she's just like pampers me oh it's good <laughs> you get- can tell you're in the new zone, aren't you? <laughs> Adam, come on. I'll do some exfoliating and moisturising for you. Yeah, no, I have to exfoliate nice. myself. All right, she won't do in that. In the shower. Because there's an exfoliating face wash on the side, which right. I assume is for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of my favourite things about being in a relationship is just using all the expensive shit that you know your partner doesn't want you going anywhere fucking near. Do you make a hand like, cocktail? <laughs> a Love hand it. cocktail? Love yeah. it. You put like four of them Once in your night, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's dirty. That's dirty. Cum. Yes, I know. Oh. You make me think of your cum. Don't you ever put like all of them together? Like, and then just make a big... I don't think you meant to do that. I think that makes a new thing. Okay. I think I thought you were still thinking about cum. <laughs> I thought we were still doing the joke. Um, no one yeah, the shower cocktail, no? I don't do... Well, what if you invent a new fucking element? Yeah. A new element. <laughs> I would honestly Fire, be worried. water. Uh, what's the one? Earth. Yeah. No. Shower cocktail. <laughs> I thought the elements were like, oh, what's on the periodic table? Elements. Elements, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'd be worried that if you got herbal essences, L'Oreal, and Make like a black Dove, hole. you'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> you've made uranium. <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, you'd be glowing then. <laughs> I'm in a great mood. Keep Ow. going. Sorry. That hurt you? Yeah. Well, you've been exfoliating your eardrums. Um, <laughs> Ow. I think, that, I think that's Vag. the next step. Me, me ears are a bit waxy. But you're not meant to use cotton wool buds. Can I have a look? No. Can I just, uh, as a friend, colleague. Do you know what that is? You know what? They're not too bad, but I'm going to tell you something now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you this as a colleague, as a friend, yeah. as a business partner. You are starting to get something that happened to me in and around the same age as you. You're starting to get hairy ears. Well, luckily, Dan, I'm going to use my Weed Whacker 1.0 from manscaped.com. What what code were they using? Uh, I've already got mine. Don't need a discount code. But genuinely, it happens to men. It's the grossest thing, like on the edge of the ear. Like, I shave my ears. (laughs) (laughs) And I... I, I shave, I shave my ears. I get the old Gillette Mac 3, you know, um, only in the weeks where Manscaped you know aren't sponsoring to, us. You, well, we have to, we're we going to have to stop saying Gillette Mac 3 when Manscaped bring out a... a Manscaped a, a it in today's one. episode. When they bring one out and they send it, I'll use it. Because I'm like that. I will use any free shit that anyone sends. But I, products, you know, on the... Free you know, round the... What would you call it? Like the rim of the ear? The ear. The, ear, the yeah. upper lobe. 
the whatever the just outer, outside, yeah. yeah you know on the edge the That's outer the edge the outer ear, isn't it? yeah on the beach of the year mm. yeah and just on the beach and then i i give that because i get a little bit fluff and i just clocked it with you mm. you're getting to that point where you're getting a little but i didn't see that didn't look too bad in there yeah it's not too bad but yeah. then i'm a gross man as well so i'm like you're all right kid keep going you fucking ear-based yeah. wolverine yeah my missus has got like full skincare regime every night like we're watching telly and she's doing of all course. sorts. Of, she starts doing it to me. Of course. And apparently. And this is why we I'm rule the world. And feel <laughs> lovely. Girls wash the face. Too much 17 regime. times a day. You know I what? wash my face 17 times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what are you up to? Eight. Wow. <laughs> you need to slow that down. <laughs> you don't wash your face? Yeah. I Do wash... you wash your legs in the shower? This is a, a, a big what? race topic, isn't it? Do you wash your legs in the shower? What? Do I don't know if you're going yes or no, yeah. I no. honestly don't know what, he, what, what, what his answer is. You let the shower do yes. the work. You, your little nooks and crannies is where it gets nasty. Now, that needs some attention. And I'll be honest, and I'm going to get hammered for this, but one of my favourite things to nick from... <laughs> from laura is femme fresh i don't know if you've ever tried femme fresh <laughs> which is basically vaginal shower gel on your dick and balls nice and gentle low ph level so i only go nooks and crannies but to fucking shower gel your shins oh, but you wash your torso what you've been doing like you mountain do all this biking stuff, yeah, and the bum and the willy and that and then you let the legs have the runoff no femme i don't fresh is for nooks and fannies Do you know what? That should be our new drop. I'll just take a st- and it'll just be silence. <laughs> there might have been a hard cut there if you've just seen. I don't know what it was. Uh, no, that's not getting cut. <laughs> I'll just let that hang. And everyone in the room just thought, Kobe. <laughs> we didn't even need to. Do- I think people at home went, Kobe. You don't wash your legs, do you? You don't wash. Do you wash it? Do you literally shower your tits? Yeah. You wash your top. Hang on. Why? Whoa, 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 whoa. Dan, Why? Dan, over here. Yeah? Over here, got me? Do you yeah. soap your pits? Yeah. Yeah, so what do you, why don't you just do it as well then? I mean, do you, not, do you not wash your chest? <laughs> I'm going to turn into Steve Coogan like. Do you not wash your chest? You don't wash your chest. I don't. I've... Everywhere I can reach, I wash. Yeah. I just don't... Ba- my back is filthy. <laughs> yeah. Because the shower dust. That's mad. I, I honestly, I'll, I'll be honest I with you. I actually am a pits and bits. No, I, I am an all up. Like, I, I get shower gel all up my arms, in my hands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, everything I can touch. But. Not your face, though. I do my face. I, I'm exfoliating. I know, but before. You, yeah, you're, I used to dove my face. I dove my face. Right. Yeah. I, I used dove, dove. Dove's very drying, though, isn't it? It's strong soap. That That's shit. why I was flaky. Oh, man. <laughs> it, just so you know what it reminds me of. Bill Burr's oh, bit about no, lotion. No, 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 no. Not the soap. Not the. Sh- I don't use a bar. What? Got- uses a bar of soap at the forties. <laughs> I thought that's what he meant. I thought that's what he meant. Do you get showered? Adam, or bath? where's my imperial leather? <laughs> Do you wash in the garden in a tin bath? <laughs> Forty on Monday. <laughs> uh, Forty today to the public people. Oh shit! This is out on Monday. Happy birthday, lad. Yeah, but fuck the public people. What are you doing? You'd have been hearing about my birthday on Saturday if you'd signed up at patreoncom slash Have a Word Pod. Um. <laughs> you don't use bars. Yeah, I use I use a bottle of nourishing Dove lotion shower gel thing. Right. However, Dove are famous for bars of soap, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. But you've got to be a bit of a fucking fundamentalist to be like, I reject the shower gel only in bar form. Yeah. yeah that's going to dry you out a little bit. Yeah. Well, you look well, mate. You look well. But hang on. The leg thing. And I don't mean you put weight on, because that's what people say, don't they? Yeah. When you, you put weight well. Oh my God, you look really well. You're like, yeah. you mean you I feel like out. you're making some money because w- you are spending money on food, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I want to I want I want to start losing weight and then eventually get to the people like, oh my God, you look ill. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Are you on smack? You did do that a couple of years ago, didn't you? And now it's all back. <laughs> yeah. And I tell you what, if For you a little s- while there, you did look like a golf ball. It- on a tea. But yeah, my, t- my my sister made me a t-shirt for Christmas saying, uh, she, what did she say? Oh no, she was like, you look like your head's too big for your body. Mm. And then a couple of Christmases ago, as the, as the weight was going back on, she was like, yeah, there you go. You fought anorexia. And, and now she's like, whoa, 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 tone it back a bit. And I remember so, seeing you I'm in Edinburgh. Just, I'm just filling out too much. Must, must have been about five years ago. And I was like, he's skinny now. Yeah, and I, I, uh, But if you want to be popular with your friends and colleagues, lose weight. Then put the weight back on, and people love it. 
I can tell. You walk, <laughs> you walk in a room and you can see in their eyes like, hey, 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 here he fucking is, tried to extend his life, tried to better himself for his wife and children. Not anymore, you fat fuck. Get back in the room, pudgy. Bounce over here, you fucking big titted boy. I, uh, they really like it. So I've done that for them. I am. Um, I want to lose a little bit away for coming out of lockdown. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I want to be the sexy guy in the beer garden. That's what I want to be. Yeah, but you've you've kept the weight off in the main, haven't you? I reckon I've but you do about, look well. <laughs> I reckon I've put about half a stone back on. What are you talking about? Your legs? Oh, my legs. Washing and legs. I wash them if I feel like they're dirty. And what's your regime for your big vagina? Because we just did. What's your regime for your skin, babes? And how much weight have you lost? I think there'll be lids watching this going, are I these me two? What I dove f- me dick. You what? I dove me dick inside and out. Of course. Yeah. How do you dove inside your dick? Pull me foreskin back. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I don't have an inside. Put it back. I thought you were going really militant then and getting like an earbud and just like. Dan, do you know when you have old, special alone time? The old uh, <laughs> special alone time. Do you nightly? What do you call a Jap's eye without being racist? Um, Doesn't matter. You've said that. Urethra. Is that it though? Just the hole in the end of your willy. I thought the urethra was the tube. Dick hole. Is, yeah, is that the medical term? <laughs> yeah. I'd want to. I'd want to double check that that doctor was properly qualified. If he was like, right, Mr. O, pants off. We're going to look at your dick hole. <laughs> yeah. We're going to put a camera up your dick hole. I wonder if any doctor in medical science has, and knowing that if they do use the medical term for it, no one's going to know what they mean, have just gone, listen, you know, we need to put a camera in your Japs eye. Yeah. 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 Japs eye is offensive, isn't it? Defo. <laughs> Keep saying it. <laughs> of course, I'm with him. But right, but, but sh- that's the only thing. That's the only way I know. I'm not it. the spokesperson for Japan. <laughs> <laughs> they, over there, they but just, you've been. Yeah, didn't this come up? <laughs> no, no. They, they just call it the eye. Oh, dear. sorry, guys. Listen, so far, here's the thing. No, I've got something to say. Finn, right. can you pull up what a Jap's eye is? Medical term, please. Um, just keep saying it. Yeah. <laughs> is is the thing? Is the thing right? Because the reason Speak. it's called that. And this is offensive, is because it's a very thin slice, isn't it? Yeah. And people have gone because of the historical racism towards Asian people, like their eyes are more slanted. We'll call it a Jap's eye. That's why they call it. A, my, Do you know, it's worse when you explain it out. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good look at my one a couple of months ago, and I've got a surprise Caucasian eye. My looks like. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen? Bad punches scream. Have you seen the advert for the postcode lottery? You know when they tell them they've won. <laughs> that their eyes is what my dick looks like. <laughs> you Fuck have like off. you have eight second pisses like a fucking fire hydrant. Oh, I need a wee. Vroom. Oh. My God. <laughs> yeah. A surprise Caucasian. Oh, yeah. We have to stick a camera in your surprise Caucasian. <laughs> stick a fucking Ford Cortina up there. It's massive. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask about How that, is yeah. that not funny, Carl? It is. <laughs> How am I, having, I am having such a good time. I think it's one of the best bits he's done for fucking... We, like, and then you're like... I'm just trying to actually, dodge. Actually, I think that's very offensive because I spent time in Japan. <laughs> And we called it the medical term. Which is the urethral metus. <laughs> I know. Right, listen. If you're of Japanese heritage and you're like, guys, there's no way around it. That harks back to some really horrible old school racism. I know it does. And I genuinely have used it for my whole life, not really doing that thing that Adam just did, which is linking it to the thing. I just because think it's wants- acknowledging, acknowledging the historical context. Well, I'm not going to stop saying it. <laughs> I'd never, I'd never done that. I genuinely, in my head, it was the nap night. But no wonder we've all stuck to that. <laughs> that because makes, that makes the, urethral metus <laughs> the urethral meters. The urethral meters. Fuck, it's piss meat. Urethral meters. Piss meat. Oh no. my God. Yeah, Dan, when you have a long time. You've just really pissed off all the deaf Japanese people there as well, by the way. Where do you, yeah, um, where do you... <laughs> Moving on. Where do you um finish? Into a tissue, onto your belly and wipe it off. Because if it's onto, onto your belly floor. and you don't wash your belly, you got a jizzy belly. 
Eh, I've seen Adam stand up about that. I have never done that. I think that is a level of Ming that I will not do. Plus, no, but have you ever come on your belly and then wiped it off? I don't mean, like, I'm not saying rub it in. But if you ever, like, you know, got a death hole wipe and just... Death hole? Yeah. Bleach? If we're, if, we're talk- <laughs> if we're talking about it, welcome to my world of expertise. And I think in comedy, you should talk about what you know. Here we go. Now, I buy a suspicious amount of wet wipes for a man of my age. Like, Baby wipes. I've noticed that. Yeah. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Now I use them a lot, but I, I will have. Or, or, I mean, if you've got a baby, you always have wet wipes downstairs. I don't know how anyone raised children without wet wipes pre nineteen eighty five or whatever. <laughs> yeah, don't say it. <laughs> what? You've just thrown them off a hail mary to just kick out the bar, haven't you? Oh, <laughs> you've got a baby. I, you can't stop wanking. <laughs> I honestly, <laughs> the the nonce thing is absolutely is definitely funny until in my head it's about me abusing my own children and then I'm like I don't find it it's funny <laughs> yeah that's yeah. the that's a line for me um, call me crazy because um, they are that you know they're called baby wipes because of the because you wipe babies with them yeah not for where you went and you had like <laughs> those sexy newborn motherfuckers. <laughs> I didn't go there to me either. You led us there. What do Carl- you do with baby lotion then? What? What do you do with baby lotion? What's it for for a baby? You just They just get dry skin. Oh. Yeah. Fair play. <laughs> do you think it was for to help them go down slides past there? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I never really put the it. Torpedoes, <laughs> right. um, the torpedoes. Yeah. The torpedoes. Oh. Okay. I thought you said for the torpedoes. Where have you just gone in your head in the last two minutes? You've gone from wet wipes to way too much paedophilia too quick. Go on, you buy, lo- you buy loads of baby wipes for the man yeah. of your age. Um, yeah, so I use I use them. Which mean you use them? On uh, what? What, do you want my nighttime schedule? Yeah. Night, love, bye. Make sure the door's closed. Night, night, love you. Then leave that room. Genius. Um, then I go and... My room, the spare room, which is definitely my room. It's decorated how I want it, and it's got my clothes in it. It's not the spare room. It's my room. It's got a race car bed. It's got a race car bed, <laughs> and it's got an Iron Man poster. <laughs> and Rick and Morty, because I'm really into it. And then I, I get two wet wipes out, treat myself right. I'm doing well in life, you know. Podcast is doing well. I don't think I should be a one wet wipe man. Yeah. Couldn't say that. One wet wipe And then, yeah. That's me. That's my little... But do you come into the wipe or onto yourself and then wipe it off? That's what I do. Enjoy your breakfast, everyone. Monday morning. <laughs> I am a... If it's an away leg, I will I will use something to jizz into. Because you, you know... When you're saying away in someone else's house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you're like, oh, I need to. I don't want to, but I have someone to. Someone else's spare room. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Friends and family. <laughs> It's fucking happened when you're like, oh god. See, I just hold a cup and try and <laughs> try and catch it. Ever seen the Kim Kardashian poster where she's got the champagne on her ass? Adam does that with his yeah, with his face. yeah. So, uh, put a cup. But if it's a home, <laughs> <on> me back. <laughs> try and... You'd need a, a a serious breeze, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's a Kobe, that you know. <laughs> That's a Kobe if you get that in like that, a shot. That is, it? yeah. You basically to get that sort of like to. To get the physics of that right, you would need to be wanking into a gale force wind. In space. Literally, jizz, have it go in the air and then back at you. Call it. You can put spin on your jizz though, can't you? <laughs> you, you lick the bat. Do you know... Do you Come know, at it from an angle. Do you know when we started and we were like, this is my new regime, this is my skin regime, I'm hoping to lose a half a stone. We went for baby, like, baby paedophilia and jizzing on your own back really quickly. Not on my own and, back, into a cup that's on me back. Just silly words from a silly man. <laughs> why why, why do you ask? Why do you ask? Because we're talking about wiping torsos and you're saying you don't and if you come all over it and then don't clean it, then I'm... Yeah, he was trying to entrap you because you'd said you don't wash your belly. And maybe there would, was just going to be fucking six decades worth of come on it. <laughs> Guys. Like a snail fan. Do, do you know how showers work? Like, you know, when that shower's, like, washing over you, I can't, it's not like you've been working in the fields or something. It's just, I do a little bit of a wet wipe sometimes, yeah. That's that's how I do that. Sound. It's really okay. nice. I, mean, I didn't realise why you were asking it as well. I was like, I'd lost the link of why you were asking it. I'm on it. Let me ask you a question. So what you're saying is, 
if you didn't wipe it off and there was just loads of jizz on your stomach? I the sh- the I shower. No, I wouldn't leave it like that because what kind of animal does that? Okay, well, that's what Carl was asking and you're, you're saying I don't. it was a ridiculous question though. Yeah. It wasn't. Because if Mate. I come on that carpet and just throw a glass of water on it, you're not going to be happy, are you? <laughs> I don't think the glass of water is the main problem there. <laughs> I wouldn't be. Happy. I know. I know. I, I know you're excited about having Alfie Brown on, but <laughs> um, there was a there was genuine gale force winds last night in uh, Chester. How was the wind in uh, Liverpool? I thought my house was going to fall down, and I'm not exaggerating. It's fucking mental. The insulation on some of my windows is a bit dodgy, and I can't be asked getting the landlord round because it's just effort in it. You got to wait in for like. Are a they double glazed? Time. Yeah, but like the piping is a bit loose. Okay, so like. My bathroom whistles. It's not good, is it? You know what I mean? I, if I'm having a poo... Is there an extractor fan? Is there an extractor fan? No. All right. It's the window. There's just a slight bit of... You know, like in a cartoon, and you fall off a hill or a mountain or something. Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I can hear when we I'm pooing. We know what whistling is. What? We know what whistling is. Does so. your house have a bit of a... In the wind? This sound a bit haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and last night... Can you sleep like that? Yeah, because I just put the telly on. Oh, mate. I don't you, know how people sleep with... Yeah, but you just say it's not sounds. haunted, it's just bad insulation. Oh, it's just... I know, it's just an horrible sound. I'm a needy sleeper, as it's been discussed before. Yeah. I need to be sensory deprivation. See, I... If me missus is there, it's pitch black, spoony sleeping. If she's not there, then it's starfish sleeping with the telly on, on a low volume. It's a bad time to be getting a garden office built, I'll tell you that. We had about two grand of fucking insulation that was overordered, sat at the front, and they'd plastic, like, put a plastic temporary roof, and the lads had left it there last night going, yeah, it'll be fine. Then the storm hit, and I went out. I wanted to leave it. So Joe Thompson, who did some work in here, is doing the because I met him through you. Mm-hmm. Uh, his missus knows you from stand-up. Yeah. He came in here, he was dead sound, we got on really well. He does great work. And then I went on his website. His stuff is amazing. Thompson Construction are building me the most badass garden office ever. What a fucking terrible time to have gale force winds hit where you live when you've got plastic roofing on your very expensive garden office is where you really want to live once your wife is fucking sick of you. Um, and then the insula- Are you ever going to see Laura again ins- once this garden office is built? Because you've got oh, your own bedroom. You've got your own... So exciting. Garden office. It's so exciting. Can't wait! I can't wait to watch the Super Bowl. I can't. I've, it was like it shouldn't really be this expensive. I was like, I need more insulation. I want to be able to shout in it. I've got uh, children in the house. I've got pensioners who live behind in a bungalow. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to shout, Patrick Mahomes, you beautiful cunt, at full volume mm-hmm. at two forty-five in the morning next February Super Bowl. I'm guessing the Chiefs are going to be back. Oh, I can't fucking wait. So anyway, the insulation started going last night and I had a moment where I was out in my dressing gown, dick and balls out, and that was flapping. People see my little dick. And I was chasing around insulation that was blowing all around my fucking street. Did you get it all back? Sort of. It's badly damaged. I don't even know what you're meant to do. What a fucking mess that was. And my brother-in-law's been staying illegally and because uh, he's in a bubble. He's in a bu- We're in a bubble with him. In a bubble. Yeah, we're in a special bubble from Sheffield. Yeah. We're in a bubble. And uh, speaking of bubbles, I see in a great bit of graffiti the other day. It says your dad watches James Bond in the bath and calls himself Bubble 07. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what legend <laughs> is putting that out as graffiti? <laughs> that is fucking. I saw one of my old uni and it was um, communism will win. And someone wrote below it, yeah. But be arsed wearing the same webs as everyone else stole, lad. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it a uni toilet? That was like... That is beautifully done. Mm-hmm. Why do I... I never see graffiti that good. Graffiti and tatting of Pearl City Centre and the bars is fantastic. Glaswegian. Glaswegian. Uh, I think Boris Johnson is a proper ball bag or something. Ball bag. It's, yeah. Yeah. Fucking ball bag. Ball bag. Well, there you go. Slag off the Tories and use a bit of Glaswegian as well. That's great. Have you ever written in toilet? Have you ever been a graffiti guy? Yeah, I told you about Colum Andy, didn't I? When I wrote Peg Leg's Gonna Get You. Yeah, and then I had to wash off. all of it off. Um, I've wrote Carl's number on a few toilets and said, if you want your dick sucking, call this guy and ask for his mum's number. 
<laughs> but they always ring up and ask for his mums instead, so it's a bit weird. Yeah. It's really awkward because her Just number is out of service. <laughs> Maybe that's the sound in your house. Ooh. My mum. Can, can, can you get a miss called? Ooh. We did, your your mum's haunting in you. I've got one here. We did stick a bomber once in town. So a lad we worked with. I'll say his name. His name is Lloyd. You know Lloyd? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can tell that story. Uh, worked in bars for years. Worked in, like, all the popular bars. So Carl just became his own legal department. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yes, no, I can do this. Um, had a long-term girlfriend whilst working in town in, like, all these popular bars and we just repeatedly cheat on her. Um, and we used to always say, Lloyd, you've got a bed. Lloyd, you've got a bed. To the point where we made stickers. So on the back of my laptop and put them in every bar in town. It was his face and it said, Lloyd has got a bed. And we stuck them in every bar in town. Like behind the bars. You got stickers made to be dickheads. Yeah. Carl, I, gi- I give you. <laughs> you've been listening to the damn Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever Adam comes with bare wordplay, I'm like, <laughs> um, I, I love that you get really into the detail of stuff. It's very, like, I think everyone enjoyed the fake Sky customer service thing. Oh, that was nice. It favorite. like takes a lot of energy to be that detailed a guy. And the fact that you got stickers made just to be an arsehole to your friend. Yeah. <laughs> show it to the camera. Oh, no, you can't show his face. I can't can show his face. But uh, that was like, if you went to a back bar in town to pick something, you'd see. Or it'd be in a toilet. So if he was with a girl he shouldn't be with, it was possible that you go, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to get... Some, people keep going on about stickers for merch, don't they? I just Is it I've me? I'm somewhere. a bit like... Should we just get some stickers made up and see what people do? Like dead, dead easy to make. Dead easy to make, and it can be pretty cheap, and we can try and throw them in with the the merch or whatever. Yeah, yeah I don't know if our merch supplier do will no, but we will can do f- it. We but can we find can, a way. To we get can them work out. it out. And I tell you what, it might be a live show thing then. Just give them away at live shows, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fucking hell, lad. I've got a fucking garden office to pay for. Um, um, with new insulation, that's not actually true. Uh, that is being paid for partly by. My wife's boob con- compensation. So, yeah. have, I t- have I told you this? You've told me. You haven't mentioned it on a. Have we, not, have we done, done it on the pod? No. Yeah, we've just found out how much she's getting for a for a burst tit. Hang on. Right. Okay. You can't just. It's a lot. You can't just drop that in without first telling people. Got a garden office because of my wife's tits. You, you, your wife, your wife's tits have burst. Broken boobies. <laughs> It, in a in building form. How did they burst? Was it a motorboat an accident? Yeah, <laughs> I was going in there. She a was like, Nicole. she was like, Dan, listen, Etta's asleep. Come get some. And you know, I'm like, I'm like, rah, 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 rah. you know, some people do a, a fairly good impression. <laughs> yeah, I went like, I get Laura going. Doesn't so it? I went suit. Oh, she loves it. She loves the the comedy of Freddie Quinn. Big TikTok. I want to burst the titty. I want to do a TikTok. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And then one of them went, poof, I was like, oh, we're off the road. It was like being on the M6 and one of your tyres going, poof, right, to just fucking, just move it to the side of the room. Get a jack. Wait, wait for the RAC. <laughs> um, so she got a boob. Yeah, the- it's fucked. <laughs> Sorry about that, lad. We're going to have to take vo- it with us. I'm going to have to sew you back. Someone volleys a tit. Yeah, it's best, though. Um, um, she, so, so she got her boobs on when she was 19. Yeah. Her grandma paid two or three grand. She, not, she didn't want to be a stripper. That's a hell of a nan, that, isn't didn't, it? Yeah. Dropping tit money. Yeah. That's fucking Nottingham. Not, My nan wouldn't have paid for me. Yeah, no, you got new tits, no. You're going to get nowhere in life, not round here in Nottingham with new titties. Do you, re- do you reckon your nan would have paid for your penis extension? What? <laughs> <laughs> if it was possible... To get your penis extended, do you think you could have gone to your nan and asked for some dick money? I don't know how we got in this lane, right? The Dan's got incredibly... I know how we did. Do you know, there's a there's a few jokes now that have been going for so long. For instance, the nonce thing that hit a point where I was like, 
we have managed to go from Dan looks a bit like a nonce from my Danish sex offender line to literally before Christmas, <laughs> Adam making jokes about me abusing my own kids, right? So that <laughs> ma- managed to go all the way down the line. And then I'm like, nah, weirdly, not enjoying that. And partly it's because it's a bit grim, but also because I think people start believing it. I think you started believing it. And I think people do start believing it. And I want to be able to do, <laughs> like go out in public or do gigs and talk about being like a, a parent without Tom Twistleton or some absolute uber lid going you're a fucking nonce and ruining a set but the tiny dick thing has got to the point where people are emailing in oh i see in this email this is this the email of the guy who's got a tiny dick and wants your tiny dick advice yeah can i read it out because it's about you it's, it's addressed to you it's, isn't it it's that it's that one okay I've, I've titled it small dick advice so we have done this joke for so long that I, I, I mean I don't Adam's so generous with his jokes he's accepted the I've got a big dick banter and I have rolled with this to the point where there is almost no comedy in this a kid with a small dick is like I just need to reach out to one of my small dick heroes <laughs> by the way do you know that nonce thing do you, know, do you know Lee Chapman yeah the Vardy lookalike had yeah. to stop doing what he was doing because he'd gone out in public with his kids and people were calling him a nonce you have to stop being a lookalike, right? Because of that. So careful. yeah, how do you and stop being a lookalike though? As in, like you stopped doing it as his job. Oh, and, and don't get me wrong, <laughs> me time. going round this on the circuit and opening up with like looking like a Danish sex offender, not the best bit of comedy I've ever done, but work to fucking treat. But after a year of podcasting, when it builds and it builds and it builds, it is unnerving when you've convinced your fucking partner that you're like, what? You know, because of the allegations. And I know people <laughs> are at home are like, yeah, Dan is actually, you've got to watch out for him. <laughs> and if I ever need proof, then this is it. Some guy going, I've got a small dick, Dan, can you help? Can I do the music for it? You can, yeah. So I, I told Sam about this as well, and I'll tell you what she said in a minute. So it says, hi, Lids. This is a question for Dan. As the pod knows, <laughs> as the pod knows is such a weird way of word now. As we all know, as podcasters, friends, and all of our listeners, especially our patrons, as we know, you have a smaller schlong than average in your experience. I don't think you can call it a schlong if it's small. No. You can't be like, ah, it's a 1.8 inch schlong. In your experience, have women ever been disappointed and not wanted to shag you because of your size? (laughs) The reason I am asking all this is because I am 17 and I have a smaller penis size and I am yet to lay pipe. You can't call it laying pipe. You can call it dropping straws. <laughs> <laughs> I want to lay the pipe. <laughs> you you want me to lay this pipe, <laughs> darling? You ain't laying pipe. You Do just, you want me? <laughs> just drop your McDonald's straw from your milkshake at the drive-through, babe. Pick that up. I am a Patreon, and I would like to remain anonymous as all my mates listen. So please don't fuck me over. Love the pod. All the best from Daniel Rivington. <laughs> Oh. oh, that's not a real name. Did a joke, you say? <laughs> Imagine if his name's Daniel it Rivington. definitely is as well. <laughs> He's not that fast. <laughs> um, Oh, God. So this guy's got a tiny little dick and he's worried that he's going to get it out in front of a woman <laughs> and she's going to go, the fuck do you want me to do with that? Mate. Have you ever had it? Has that ever happened? <laughs> fuck off! It's not that small. I Like, do you know what? If Laura, If Laura's gone... If Laura ever leaves me, I'm, I'm living in the garden office that's Why been paid she gone? for where's, by her where's she gone? Why has she gone? We need more to get in. Because if we, if we need to get in the frame of mind that Laura's gone. Because I motorboated way too hard and another one went. Right, Who's right, living right. in the house? Right. Yeah. Listen. And where's she moved to? Look, people are literally like, you didn't finish the boob compensation. I'm not going <laughs> to. Well, we will. She's gone. She's taken, the t- basically, her boobs ruptured. She had to get them replaced. And the company that made the implants yeah. have been sued in a French court and we got special medical assessment from an expert and Laura kept all of her receipts and she's getting Oh this is real isn't it? Oh, I thought you were doing the scenario in which no, Laura she's getting gone. a lot of we're getting a lot of money. And she's got that money and she's gone, I've got money now, I don't need Dan, I'm yeah. taking the kids, yeah, I'm yeah, moving. Yeah. Pay for your own fucking garden office. I'm out of here. I'm moving to where where's she gone? Let's pick somewhere. I I, I don't know. Bogner Regis? Yeah. Bogner Regis. Where did that come from? Where did that even come from? Where did in a West Sussex town just pop into just your fucking... Just the word bog is in it, and it sounds right. funny, and it's, it's Daniel Rivington. 
Bogner Regis. This is amazing random recall. I've had two coffees. Oh, I love it when he's had a coffee. Um, I wondered why we were fucking flying. Woo! Um, so she's, she's in Bog- gone. She's in Bogner Regis. She's, she's gone. She's working in HR <laughs> for a confectionery company. So she's... She, I'm sorry. She's working in HR for a sweeties company. Yeah. What human resources like would you have to get involved in at the sweetie company? Like, Put your dick with, in a jelly. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? That's <laughs> yeah. it. Don't stick your dick in the pick and mix. First rule, Barry, I can't believe we've had to get you in here again. Dick and mix. Stop fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fried eggs. I guarantee you that at some point in history, in Haribo or McVitie's, someone has pissed in the mixture. Do you know what I mean? You it can has shag the rings. What? You can shag the rings, can't you? you can shag the rings. The big Dan dummies. <laughs> This, this, guy, this guy can, sorry. Right, can I tell you in my head how small your dick is? Yeah. So in my head, right, you, it's... I'm going to draw it. Do you want a felt tip so everyone can see it? In my head, it's normal. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Okay. Let's see. Well... What what he's drawn scale. what he's drawn there is a person with a seriously deformed hip. <laughs> like, do you remember those kids that had the like plasters on both legs when they were like yeah. they had like a growth defect? That's what happens if you don't put a plaster on. No, the, the reason your hips are wide is because that's you at the top of a swing. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> genuinely, it's uh, don't don't get me wrong. I I ain't laying loads of pipe. Yeah. You know, I ain't laying major pipe. Yeah. But you could run an, an Ethernet cable through me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's that sort of like no cabling. Cabling. Mm. Cabling over pipe. No. Just had power out. Is to it the garden girthy? Office. Do you think it's girthy? No. No. I think it's more girthy. I think it's childish. That's the, I don't want to talk about my dick anymore. So, what, what, <laughs> for some reason for some reason I'm so used to being gaslighted about my genitals and my life by Adam. I'm like, this is normal. So as Carl joins in, I'm like, shut up, Carl. You fucking prick. Yeah. I if Laura leaves me and I bang a listener, which is ine- literally inevitable. If she goes, and I will never do better than Laura, but if she fucks off to Bogner Regis to work in HR for a sweetie company, and I'm left with a house and a garden office, which is not the point of having a garden office. What's the point of having a fucking garden office paid for by her tits? If she leaves, then I've just got two houses. Never mind. You can let Finn if live she- in the garden office. No. Yes. Good. Rent. Nice one. Uh, if she leaves and I bang a. Uh, uh, a, a lady that listens to the pod, which I think is inevitable because literally no one else wants me. I cannot wait for when I get my dick out and they go, oh, well, it's not that small. That'd yeah. be a nice moment. That'd yeah. be a, I mean, it's not big, but it's not writing with your small dick problem small. <laughs> <laughs> so are you telling me that every woman you've ever fucked has been satisfied by your dick? No, but... I don't know that. And you can't know that. You know, we can't know that. But I tell you what, it's never been small enough that I've whipped down my kex and had someone go, order, <laughs> order, order. order. I, what am I going to do with that chipolata? On your way, sunshine. You That's what it looks like to me. Do you know those little cocktail sausages at a little buffet barbecue thing? My, in my head, you, yours is like four of them stacked on top of each other. Why am I a fucking Jack Russell? <laughs> You've you got a little fucking pink... Pink lipstick dick? Yeah. Oh, it's not you have got lipstick because you haven't got any hats. Oh, God. Um, no, no. It's. It, I'll tell you, it, it, my penis, let, let's just order, 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 order. 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 Just for, I just want to clear this up. It's never been small enough. That, and also for this guy, you might feel like you've got a small wang, but you have to be trying to bang a really rude, heartless... Lady or anyone, if you whip your dick out and you're there and you're about to go d- down to it, because let's be honest, you get your dick out pretty soon, like in and around when you actually bang, innit? It's not like you get your dick out, wait an hour and a half and then go for it. There's not a lot of thinking time there, is there? If any woman or guy that you're trying to bang or whatever, if you are with someone who goes, what, lad? Lad? What the fuck is that? So, I just put your kicks on and fuck off because they're horrible. So your advice is to wait until it's too late for the woman to, to leave and then surprise her with the dick so that she feels too bad for leaving instead of sucking it. No. 
what I'm suggesting is you do what everyone does and you apparently you have a different system you get on the first day you're like obviously we've just finished our starters but I don't want to surprise you with my dick later on so before the mains come flop how's that <laughs> looking good it will get bigger little bit of veiny okay a little bit of a kink to the left I've done some real fucking roadman work on it alright everything to, I'll see you later off it away it goes I have what to a show it little I, have to, I, don't, I can't wait until after the starters I have to show it before we order so she's still oh got, no still got fucking room fucking hell don't I'll tell you what <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey stick your hands in the breadsticks love I think you'll know which one's not made of fucking bread love <laughs> Don't get Who any wants fucking pudding, girl. No. no I'm going to turn you into sicky toffee pudding in me house later with me cum and your pussy. <laughs> Just ran out of things to say and went grotesque. I was literally trying to do a joke about garlic breads and starters and dicks. And he's like, <laughs> and I'll fucking jizz in your eye with some custard and some cake made of my love muck. <laughs> so, mate, genuinely... Just, Stop saying schlong. Just don't call a small penis a schlong. Yeah, don't say lay pipe. That's the two things Sam said, me missus, when I when I showed her this email um, from Mr. Rivington. She said... It's not really cool. She said, she, he's got nothing to worry about. She, not, <laughs> what fucking girl's going to shag him if he's calling it a schlong? No one calls it a schlong. Yeah, I think really uh, Mr. Anonymous is sort of tuned in with the, the sort of lexicon. Is that right? The 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 sort of the words we use in the podcast. Is that right? Like he's using our turns of phrase. I don't think he's going around going, "Hey, our girl, check out my fucking man muck spreader." And if you're really, <laughs> really, really worried about it, the thing to do is only take your undies off once you're under the quilt. Never get your dick out before a starter, before the mains. No, or even the pudding. Take it off when you're under the quilt. You know. And you're already a bit fucking meaty. You know, the, the blood's flowing. Isn't this what everyone does? Yeah. Got a bit of weight in it. Like, no? Adam's, like, as no, if he's in... Is, is it... This is... Uh, this is obviously big dick thinking from you, but you are literally describing what most men having sex have ever done. Wait till you're under the covers and then maybe get an idiot and make, like you've got an erection and then you're naked. You're like, yeah, that's a lot of blokes. So when the Not everyone fun. stands in the fucking end of the bed going, get on that, <laughs> kid! <laughs> Woo! Fucking massive! Hey, you're going to need to phone a friend for lifting this girl. Fucking hell. Do your fucking back in. <laughs> no. I'll give you spina bifida with my dick. I, I understand a lot of men do what you're saying. I get it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just saying, he's asked for advice. I'm just giving him what most men would do. He's a boy. He's 17. Wait until you're under the covers. And if you're still really worried, you know, what? once it's hard, have a hold of it yourself and feel like, is this... Because by then you'll have had a little finger. You'll know how big ears is. And if it's not going to fill it... Put the balls in as well. Seventeen-year-old <laughs> lad, seventeen. Put the <laughs> balls in as well. She got to be a big old lady. Um, they tried to small they are, Genuinely, they? lad. Honestly, no one cares. Just be find a girl that you like and be nice to her. And like in Bum the end, she'll be, be like, ah, than vaginas stick as well. it in, stick Good start. it in, go in the bum first. <laughs> yeah. You'll be all right. Don't worry about it. From one, you know, small dick bro to another. Go under the quilt. Get your dick out. Put in an ass. Genuinely. I hope Laura never leaves me, but I genuinely want to get to the point when some fucking, some lady lid goes, Dan, I mean, it's not massive, but it's all right. Lady lid. Hi. Anyway. Would you, would you fuck her listening? John Black Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> would you? From the restaurant. Would you? Uh, would you fuck a listener? Would you? If Laura's gone, if Dan, so Laura, <laughs> so if, if Dan Johnson keeps sending in the amount of emails <laughs> that he sends in, I think he's going to fuck one of us. Where's Laura gone? <laughs> oh, don't move her. Don't move her. She's in Bogner, isn't she? That was the other scenario. Oh, so right. it's a totally different one. So Laura's gone. Laura's in South America. Right. Hey, right, traveling, but she's not coming back because she's met someone called Roberto. And when she was a kid, she went to see a psychic who said, you're going to end up with someone called Roberto, and she feels like it's fate. Is this Firmino in your head? No. Oh, right, okay, good. No. This he's, is Liverpool. He's a melon farmer from <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> what kind of melon? The famous melon farms of Buenos Aires. 
Welcome to Argentina! And that is why we long for the Falklands to grow our strong melons! Yeah. It's the national fruit of it Argentina. <laughs> Fact. On the flag. The melon. But the psychic said that Roberto would work with fruit as well. So she's like, it's fate. And obviously, the kids are with Laura. They went travelling with her, you know, to find themselves. And, um, yeah. So, so she's gone. Laura's gone. Laura's gone. Yeah. And, you know, you, you go through the, the mandatory, you know, breakup period. You go to some therapy. Uh, you find out this is you all the some memories from need. when you were a kid. This is it. Uh, you, you, you know, you got, you got fiddled with by a priest and it, it comes out, but you get over it. Got fiddled with by a C of E priest. You've got to be unlucky there. Yeah. We went to a United Reformed Church and there was a female vicar. So yeah. I've really fucking yeah. got unlucky. But yeah. go on. Yeah, so she's rimmed you and it's come out, right? <laughs> right, right, right. But you get past it. I mean, I'm blanking now, but this could happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get past it. Yeah, so yeah. eventually you're like, oh, I'm ready to love again. I'm ready to get, get back out there. Um, and, you know, th- this happens quite quick. So this is early next year. And the pod's doing well. And, you know, you, you mentioned on a pod a couple of times when we start getting emails from listeners going, I'll fuck you, Dan, I'll fuck you, I'll suck your dick, I'll tongue punch your arsehole. So would you? <laughs> That's been a couple of them. What, would you Would you fuck a, a listener? Laura and I are separate. Laura's, Laura's, gone. Laura's gone. Laura's gone. And she's happy. She's with Roberto. <laughs> Roberto the melon farmer. <laughs> and I've obviously got, you know, and she's getting a lot of vitamin C or whatever the, you know, nutrients vitamin of a melon is. D. Like. Yeah. Dick. And I've obviously got my own issues that I'm dealing with, but I'm beyond that now. Yeah. And I'm looking for love. Just to have someone go, it's not that small of a dick. Yeah, I'd bang a listener. Okay, cool. Well, there you go, guys. Get your uh, emails in now. No, 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 no. No, don't. No, definitely, definitely don't. Dan's private email. Because she's not in Argentina yet, all right? Okay. She is. Finn, can you set up a new email? I would fuck Dan. Have a word at gmail.com. No, no. Finn. Finn. (laughs) Been cha upset my my I'm very just pregnant trying wife. Trying to get some options lined she up. She will you. burn my unfinished garden office down with her pregnant fury. That For the love of fuck, well. do not set that Gmail up. Can't. It's been used before. yet. It's already been used. It's already been taken. <laughs> there you go. Saved by the, the bell. I'll be gone. She fucking kills me. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. To Daniel Rivington. Um. Lad, you'll be all right. First time, take your kicks off under it. You never know, though, because like you're saying, your dick's not that small. It's just become a sort of humour point for us on our well, half show. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, we've all been in the Virgin Active dressing rooms and gone, whoa, yeah. you know? It's not massive, but... Yeah. But this what? guy might have a fucking, you know, a little fucking third nipple down there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what, what would your advice be in that situation? Find a really nice girl. Treat her well and get that good a finger in. It's honestly not bad advice. Yeah. Re- really, just watch some lesbian pornography, but not like, you know, like, oh my god, I'm a lesbian. Like the real sort of ground and pound, you know, proper ground and pound. Yeah, the proper like these are lesbians like, my name's Barbara. Let's watch a fucking film. Right. Do this. Right. No, but I'm genuinely get good at the get good at the get good at the oral. Be an oral master. Yeah. And she'll be like, oh, honestly, Daniel And Rivington. learn to live with the fact that licking bum holes is okay, and occasionally you might oh. taste a bit of poo. Do you know what? Apart from the last bit, which was fucking horrible, it's good. Just get in there. Yeah. Lick what you can. Have a little truffle for snuffles. Yeah. <laughs> snuffle for truffle. But genuinely, if you're not going to work in porn, and you're not maybe going to be a Lothario. Specialist porn. Find a nice girl. Treat her if well. If anything, actually. Take her out and don't get your dick out in the restaurant. That might be good advice. Try and wear him porn. There's definitely a subcategory for nipple dick to wear those. Take any of these points of advice. Yeah. Do all of it. Try porn. Become an ass valater. <laughs> wear him porn. <laughs> Lick bum holes. Oh, there's nothing worse. And finger like a maniac. There's nothing worse than a fat man with a small dick in porn. You're like, how oh, did you get this gig? Yeah. He isn't in uni yet, Evie. He's 17, so he's got time. Yeah. You can oh, just switch don't courses. worry about it. Do the porn masters. But I tell you what, you know what you've said out loud here? Don't say it out loud again to anyone. <laughs> like, I know with the modern climate we live in about share your experience, talk about your mental health, probably don't say this to another human especially your mates, because this might never go away. He got, uh, Carl got stickers made 
to take the piss out of his mates. If your mate, like stickers are cheap, if they're the kind of animals that do that stuff, your small dick stickers could be everywhere. Have you ever in the bedroom used a blindfold? Once, yeah. Okay. From my experience, every woman I've ever been with loves a bit of blindfold fun, right? So they what it, on the first on the first date on the first time you have sex? Yeah, in the restaurant. I really like you, Adam. Pull this on. <laughs> yeah. So I would just in because a lot of stuff's done online now. People talk for a lot, especially in the middle of the pandemic, beforehand. Tell her that you're into blindfold fun. Say, you know what I'm saying? Kinky, you don't want to tie it up. You don't want to, you know, shove it in a car boost or anything like that. You just want to... What kind of role play involves a fucking car boot? Car boot sales sex. Yeah. Oh, car boot sales sex. Yeah. <laughs> Get up at 4.30, fill the car boot. Watch the pasting table. I'll bang you um, in a field. Yeah, make it clear it's just blindfold. Right? Yeah. So when you get back, put car a blindfold park, on it. Car park's not in fields. And then fuck her with a strap on. She'll think you've got a fucking absolute fucking belter. Talk about pipe. You can get fucking big strap-ons. Let's have a break. <laughs> and our new sponsor, adamstrapons.co.uk. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, what's the best brand for products that help you shave your balls? It is, of course, the products available at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com are one of the sponsors for the Have A Weird podcast, and we absolutely fucking love them. Why is that? Because they have revolutionised the male grooming game. That's why, okay? Have a little look in your kecks right now. I bet your pubes are disgusting. I bet they're horrible. But if you had the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 to help you shave down there with its little light on it and its battery life that lasts two hours and the fact you can use it in the shower because it's waterproof. If you had all that, you'd be able to trim your pubes a bit better, wouldn't you? Now look at your nose. See those nose ears? Imagine you had the Manscaped Weed Whacker and you could just stick it up and it does all that for you. And you know that because of the premium technology that goes into the Manscaped products, you're not going to snag the bag. No more bleedy balls. Exactly. You need to go to manscaped.com right now. Get yourself the Weed Whacker, the Lawn Mower 3.0. Get yourself some ball deodorant. Get yourself some ball wipes. Or get all of them as part of a bundle. And on top of that, listen to this. If you use the promo code WORD, that's W-O-R-D, you get 20% off your entire order and free worldwide shipping. Free shipping, 20% off, and you get to get your balls looking all neat and tidy. And maybe your beard will suck it off a bit more often. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Back to the pod. I am real. Are we back? I am really looking forward to doing Adam Rowe and Friends on the 17th and 18th. And I'm doing Hot Water on the 19th as well. I can't wait to do that. Yeah, so... My head's been <clears throat> ticking, thinking of stuff. Oh, I've, I've wrote more since I announced those shows, stand-up-wise, than yeah. I have... Throughout the whole pandemic combined, definitely. As soon as yeah. I put the first, even though it's a very small tour and it's miles down the line, it's a year and a half away, it's, it'd be a handful of small venues. It's made me go, it's just, it, it just energises you. You've got something that you're working towards. I can't wait to do it again. 17th and 18th of May, hotwatercomedy.co.uk. Uh, you're only doing the early shows with me. I think it's important that people know that in yeah. case they book. And well, you're only doing short sets. It's 15s, isn't it? Is yeah. it 15s? 10, 15, well, 20, the baby, whatever. The baby's going to be born a few end of before. April. So it's like three. That'll be my first gigs after the baby's born. And I just like... Well, it's going to be, they're going to be the first... They're the first days that comedy becomes legal again. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's me being really magnanimous. Like, obviously, I just... I'm not going to gig before, <laughs> you know, the baby... Oh, that's right. That's the first <laughs> one I can do. There will be some beer garden gigs, though, no? There might be one or two in April. I don't think there'll be many. No. A lot of them are waiting to summer as well. But yeah, 17th and 18th of April, hotwatercomedy.co.uk. Uh, we'll put the link, actually, in the description and stuff. Uh, the show's at 7 p.m. each night, which Dan's on, and then because they've sold... Well, the Monday's sold out. The Tuesday's going to probably be sold out in the next few days anyway. Um, we've added 9.30 shows, which you're not going to be at, but it's going to be me doing about half an hour, 40 minutes of stuff. And I've got one, two, or maybe three mates with me just trying some new material to get back in the swing of things. It's not going to be perfectly written, not going to be perfectly perfectly crafted, but you will hear some stuff that no other humans will ever hear again. So that's interesting. That's it. It? It's always exciting. My favourite thing about new material is seeing there's three ways it's going to go. It's either never being said again, or it's an absolute gem. Or it's going to be, the third one's not as funny, one of those annoying bits where you're like, is it funny? And then you noodle it around your notebook for six months and then go, ah, oh, nah, fuck it, never worked. Mm. But that is, I love that about new comedy. 
and new material nights. It's exciting. Would you do if someone's got a beer garden? Would you do? Would you? Would we do a little beer garden gig? Cause, yeah. Because before, when the lockdowns were kicking off and the restrictions were mental, we were like, "Oh fuck it, we'll do, we'll do a gig, we'll do a gig somewhere." And and then you look at it and you're like, "Yeah, we don't need the flak, we don't need the abuse." But if it's all right to do a beer garden gig, I did a couple in the summer just as the restrictions were easing, and they were great because yeah. people were happy for you to be there. Yeah. So uh, if you've I, got a big fat beer garden, yeah, and you want us to do something in April, early May. Yeah. More, 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 more than up for that. Um, Lewis Clark says... And if you do have one, uh, have a word pod at gmail.com, as always. Sorry. Yeah, not that other email address from before that should not exist, Carl. <laughs> Would you rather, Lewis Clark says... All right, Andrew Arsh... Oh, sorry. All right, Andre Arshavin, Didier Drogba, Carlton Cole, and Fernando Forri- Forrest... Uh, have I... Have I already done this question? I'm, as I'm reading this out, I'm like... I feel like I've said that I, I won't. Be, I won't be able to tell you whether you've done the question. Would you rather be able to pick any venue in the world, guarantee sellout once a month, and do a gig, a gig, and, and once a month do a gig there for the rest of your career, or have any guests you want, one public podcast and Patreon a month? So, we've not done that before, have we? No. I just feel like I'd, I, I'm so used to the made-up names, the Andre Arshavin, Didier Drogba, Carlton Cole, Fernando Forit, for it. What, how do you say it? Forestieri. Forestieri. Forestieri, yeah. Yeah. Did he play for, he played for Watford? I think. Uh, yeah. And then Sheffield Wednesday? Sheffield, yeah, Sheffield, I see him at Sheffield, yeah. Um, so he says, you get to pick any venue in the world and you get to guarantee sell that out once a month for the rest of your career. Or we get anyone we want for an episode once a month. The first one? Really? Yeah. I think you've... I think you've really banged the podcast in a big spot there, Rowie Bags. Well, fuck the podcast. I'm doing Madison Square Garden once a month with new material. Oh, my God. <laughs> That'd be... You bet anybody on the couch means anybody. Yeah. Doesn't it? Anyone alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald Trump could be on the couch next week. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, eventually, Donald Trump would come and see me at Madison Square Garden because we would run out of people to sell tickets to. Yeah, do you think he would? No, I know, but I'm saying that's not good for everyone. How mental would it be when you got bored of Madison Square Garden? When you're like, when like your agent rang up and went, uh, Adam, sorry, we've not booked in, uh, we've not booked in June for the Anywhere in the World sellout show. Where do you want to do? Oh, I feel like I'm bored of New York. I've been there five times. <laughs> I've made 8.2 million in five months, but... Doing new stuff. Just fancy that. <laughs> As if you do new and stuff. And then you go on top. As if you do new stuff. What, what, what kind of fucking mental will be like, hello, New York! <sighs> anyway. So, um, <laughs> isn't it really funny when... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really funny when you think about um, when you've lost weight after you've uh, um, and then you put weight back on and everyone thinks you're great. <laughs> Anyone? I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll put a maybe next to that one. <laughs> I'll put a line through that. I'll put a question mark. I think that is quite good. Um, I, how weird would it be on the sixth one when you're like, yeah, that Wigan, Wigan so working men's club sounds all right. Where would you choose for your once a month sellout gig? But you've got to do new stuff. So if you're not comfortable doing new stuff at Madison Square Garden, where would you do it? Guaranteed sellout. Why? What's the new stuff thing? Because it's your new material gig. You've so put, you've put a weird caveat on this. I have, yeah, because I want to put a spin on it. I, I. So you know those Adam Rowan friends gigs we're doing on the seventeenth and eighteenth of May, hotwalls.comedy.co.uk. Yeah, me and you, you're doing the They're at Madison Square Gardens, Gardens, are they? No, but if you could set Dan that, Nightingale and no mates, Madison Square Gardens. <laughs> no, but like if you could do Nightingale and friends once a month. Guaranteed sellouts any venue. And you can pick, do you pick a different venue every month or is it just, do you pick one venue and that's it for That's ever? it. Pick your one venue. Ah, right. You have to do that place forever. I'll be honest, this sounds ridiculous, but if it's, you just pick one venue and that's the one and you can do that every month. Like a normal promoter does, they found a pub or venue mm-hmm. <laughs> and, then, and then they, that's how, but yeah, you can pick anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. I would have to factor in that I would get fucked off flying to New York. It would start... I know that sounds... Are you going to do ludicrous. Alexander's in Chester? I, that has also... Yeah, no. Not going to do Alexander's in Chester. Where's good 
and local. Hot water? No. I am genuinely want to be... Where would be good to be, like, the king of just... Who would I love pissing? Sheffield. There you go. I'll do the Sheffield <laughs> City <laughs> Hall. <laughs> City Hall on a Saturday once a month <laughs> to really... <laughs> Fuck off the competition. Um, I'll, be the, I'll be the king of Sheffield. <laughs> Shout out to Toby Foster. Hope you well. Please don't hate me. Just fucking about. Um, yeah, good. Genuinely, I know it sounds ridiculous where you're like, I play the the Hawaii Opera House. I don't know if they've got one. But I, I, think I get pissed I'd go, off with the travel. I'd, I'd probably choose... Hot water's got to be up there. Like, no. It's just so easy, but... I, I, what about the Everyman? No, I've no. never even been in the Everyman, but it's not like a good stand-up room, is it not? No. Um, obviously you've got the Empire. That's three thousand people. Oh, do you want to be doing new stuff to three thousand people? Do you know what I mean? And Adam Rowan friends to three thousand people. That's definitely sold out. But this is the thing with that. It's definitely sold out. They definitely. They're not definitely loving every minute of it. No. So you you have to put put, put a proper show on. I think I'd want a five, six hundred seater. I was thinking the store in Manchester. Yeah. I love the store in Manchester. It's got... Oh, yes. I might pick the store in London. <laughs> Once a month. <laughs> I'll pick the store in London. And you know what it'll be called? It will be called Dan Nightingale and all his mother mates that have been unfairly banned by the store. Yes! It's going to be me... Johnny Vegas and Duncan Oakley every fucking month. <laughs> Genius. Why am I dream venues all about revenge? <laughs> no, actually, third one. My ex-girlfriend, Vicky, I will do every month at her house. Um, I'll do Baby Blue then. <laughs> and do a late show at the Slaughterhouse. <laughs> fucking hell. Is that Anne Frank up there? <laughs> Part of the contract, you've got to say it. <laughs> oh, such a slaggy off in joke. It's, oh. it's funny though. Who would you have on the couch if you could have anyone though? Tom Segura is my number one guest. No, not comic. You can have any person on the planet. Gen Tom Segura is my number one guest. <laughs> of any person. Genuinely, yeah. if if that be the best episode, I would love Tim Dillon on that couch. Yeah, You've both I, I have gone from naught to Tim Dillon. We wouldn't in speak two for months. two hours. He. <laughs> Do you know what I love about having guests like Alfie Brown is? And what I've noticed about me and Adam, because there's days where we do serious things and there's days there, like, I'm in a, I want to answer these questions seriously and Adam's just in the mood to fuck about. But what I have noticed about us, we have got to that point of, like, reps where we tune in to the guest. So if it's Freddie, we're like, ah, it's one of our mates, we'll take the piss. Rah, 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 rah. And when it's Alfie, when it's Alfie, because he's smart, and because we both admire him as a comic, I think there's an element of like, you want to be able to like sort of tune up to Alfie. Like, I'm not saying we change who we are, but you're like, he's interesting. He's bright. I mean, he might be an absolute Muppet for the whole episode, but usually it's insightful. He's intelligent. And I think both of us are like, right, tune in. I'd love to tune into Tim Dillon and see and see what that was like. Segura is a hero, isn't he? I think... Billy For what Burr. I think, well, Bill Bear, obviously, like these are genuine dream guests, but I, I've thought about this a lot. It's it's one of the questions I get asked when I do those Instagram Ask Me Anything things is, who's your dream podcast? And I've thought about it. Obviously, we'd love to get Bill Bear on and Andrew Schultz and all the big Americans that we've eulogized about a hundred times. I've thought about it properly. And I think the comic that could most sit on that couch and just jump into the skipping ropes of what we do, I think it's Tom Zagora. I think he's our number one target as What a about non-comic guests then? Just humans? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Because you've had some non-comics you've smashed it as well, like Johnny and... Rolf Harris. Did you do it? Oh, my God. Do you want to turn our podcast into a live nonce hunter podcast? Yeah. Stinson I'd, Hunter. I think this would be great if this was like an all-powerful, if this was like a demigod that gave us the power to book anyone we could literally do a list of like, it could become like an ultimate live interview style conspiracy pod, couldn't it? Because they have to be booked. Mm -hmm. So you could book Gary Glitter, Ralph Harris. Who are the famous nonces? 
could really Michael stop. Jackson, Adam Red Johnson. Talbot. I don't think Michael Jackson's a difficult one. I don't think Michael Jackson's going to say yes, you know. What? Because he's deceased. Is he? Freddy, Gen- genuinely, I thought Finn was having a walk. That freaked me out when he thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Finn had gone out for fresh air, and he's like, "Why have you gone pedophiles for <laughs> dream guests?" <laughs> who? Yeah, who are the big stars? I think Tom Hanks. I know he's not necessarily funny, but I thought we'd stop doing pedophiles. <laughs> ja! Upset me, nasty bitch. Order, order. I, I will not have that, sir. You can talk about my small He's day. a rumoured nunch. I'm allegedly, oh, I'm not saying he is. For the love of... T- he is? You t- oh, Wouldn't you go like on. Putin and Trump together? No, we're not just brushing over that. He's the fucking... He is the father of modern cinema. I mean, really modern cinema before any absolute filmophiles. Come on, mate. You can't say that about Tom Hanks. I'm not saying he is. I'm saying that, to, that there's chat about it. You definitely just did. No, I said it. Because no one in here was saying it. I said it you as said a it. joke, Dan, with a comedy podcast. I don't like <laughs> that joke, Adam. I don't want anyone to hear well, this. Well, then write it off, Com. Can we have a fucking, we'll fucking five-hour Zoom call about it? Guys, we're just having a meeting. Come here, mate. Never talk about Tom Hanks like that. It's bank out of order. He eats kids with Hillary Clinton. He covers them in marinara sauce. Marinara! (laughs) Please for Chelsea. (laughs) And he's another nonce. Yeah. There's chat about it. So we just had to have a meeting, guys. You won't have heard what we said, but that got pretty heated. But it's artistic process. There's chat about him. So, genuine, non-comic guest, pick three. Obama. Yeah. I think think Obama... I think dull as fuck. No, are you having a laugh? No, he's we- got flavour. No, he's flavour. First thing that came to your mind, <laughs> Barack Obama, flavour. Oh, get up. He he is brilliant on stuff. Oh, I like love that. him. Yeah, his but- between two ferns, considering he's not a comedian, makes him look so sound with Zach Galifianakis. I think I think Obama is is a pick where in terms of so what you're trying to get right if you've got a dream guest you're trying to get the numbers massive and you don't want them to lay an egg I'd go Tyson because I'd love to see you try and push him to the level of murder genuinely my one of the first things that's come to my head is David Icke because I'd love to watch David Icke have a conversation (laughs) with you and just see where that goes have you seen the emails from the Flat Earther guys? Yeah, they want to get involved, yeah. don't they? I think they want to Zoom, though, because they're in America. I think yeah. they do want to Zoom, and I'll pull the internet out that day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be funny as fuck to vlog that. Fuck the fuck off. David Icke. Right. And watching you listen to what he believes. Because <laughs> I give you conspiracies that there's mountains of evidence for. He believes some really weird stuff. Yeah, I'm sick of your file of facts of facts. It's just, it's too much sometimes. I'm like, Adam, you've just done too much research on this shit. <laughs> so Obama Tyson can like. fall off the edge. <laughs> Obama. I, I have to give you that. I think Tyson would be pretty good. Would you want Connor on more than Tyson though? Well, now we had the spies and we beat old men up. And- but I think if we're using that against Con- Conor McGregor, Tyson's got a fucking pretty brutal check in history, hasn't he? He has, yeah. So... Yeah. If you're going to have a boxer on, there's got to be some wiggle room, hasn't there? Otherwise, you've got, a, a, like, not Evander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis just being boring. Yeah, wiggle room. Yeah. Um, only, there's no interest in boxers, really, is there? <laughs> there's no interest in boxers. As in, like, do, do you think? Chris, Chris Eubank's sound, isn't he? Chris Eubank. Eubank. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't sit opposite Chris Eubank. Sure I'd just end up doing an impression of him, and it would really wind him up. Please do it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely. Tyson nice. Fury would be good. You know when you're playing uh, Madison Square Gardens with Adam, Adam Rowe and friends. All right, guys. Great to be in New York. I'll start with my Chris Eubank impression. That is really good as well. Really good. They'll love that in New York. Do big... you want some salt and vinegar, Chris? <laughs> it's just a lisp. Want some salt and vinegar, Chris? It's not that bad. Do you want some salt and vinegar, Chris? I have some salsa when I get crisps. It just sounds like a weird... Do you know what I mean? Prawn cocktail. Why is Chris Eubank obsessed with crisps? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some Seabrook of salt? <laughs> Do you want a garlic bread with your lasagna? <laughs> Spaghetti bolognese? What about musicians? 
Obviously, Finn would have the late great John Lennon. No, it's got to be someone alive. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Finn is still try. Who's mad as fuck? I don't want someone who's like, I am amazing and I'm just trying to change the world. Jenny I want someone. Be great. I want someone who is mad as a bag of monkeys. Like, Liam. no, Liam Gallagher. I just feel like it's going to be eggy. Oh, Do you think? Do you think he's class? He'd be sound. Yeah. Can we have Noel as well? Make no, it really spicy. I prefer Noel to Liam. Yeah, Noel's a gobshite. Liam's yeah, sure. dead sound. Yeah. Right, cool. Yeah. Um, what? I can't believe you said that about Tom Hanks. I feel like I want him to be my dad. So, me saying Tom Hanks shags kids oh. is worse than Tom Hanks shagging kids. Awful. Allegedly. It's <laughs> way too much of a pause on it. Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah. Or Sean Nepal. A Sean Nepal. <laughs> Yeah. Do we want any women on the couch? No. <laughs> Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh. of course. Okie doke. We want Dua Lipa. Yeah. Kat Dealey. Dua Lipa. Kat Dealey. <laughs> that musician. <laughs> Meghan Markle. Yeah. Because I really felt with Oprah, she had to pull some punches. <laughs> she did, You yeah. know, here, she could sit down like fucking, there's Harry looking all like nervous. Yeah. And Meghan could be like, guys, I'm going to say it. They're fucking nonsense. Yeah. They're racist bastards. They said, Megan, hey, what colour's your fucking paper gonna be? <laughs> At the Queen. Yeah. No, Would no, you no, rather? no, it was a member of the royal it family. Wasn't the Queen or Philip. No, was. from the voice, you've got to guess which which oh. member of the royal family. Hey, I'm fucking royal, me. Johnny Vegas. Hey. Would you rather Stupid. give up your title of being family. a princess or let Prince Andrew do the babysitting? <laughs> Would you rather. No, you've got to do it, Megan. <laughs> Harry, Harry, sit down, you ginger nuts. No, come in, lads, come in. What's it How like to good would in? that be? If they were, we're going to do two interviews. We're going to do, because Dan Nightingale and Adam Rowe did a really good job of the mental health episode, the bonus mental health special. Yeah. And I just feel really comfortable talking about my own mental health. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and they talk about race all the time. Is this Chris Eubank? Yeah. That sounds like it's Chris Eubank. <laughs> I'm going to get a... Salt and vinegar fist. Why don't we get Chris Eubank and what Meghan Markle on the same they, episode? What they said to me was they said, if your child was a flavour, what flavour would it be? <laughs> and I said, that's racist. That's really racist. Is this Tyson now? No, I think it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> that's ignorant. No, that's ignorant. <laughs> Fuck Meghan Markle's fit, isn't she? She is, yeah. Really pretty. Glowing, she's got that pregnancy glow, she's and she beautiful. got rid of Piers Morgan. Woo! Go on, Megan. Yeah, she got rid of Piers Morgan. That fucking jowly twat. He's coming back somewhere though. Isn't of he, course though? he is. He'll have his own show for about eight minutes. The country was like, "God, he really holds the Tory ministers accountable." Oh yeah, and when that ended, he was just an horrible cunt again, making ITV eggy in the well, morning. She ghosted him, didn't she? On a date. Mm-hmm. That's what he's. That's what apparently. That's why he's so salty. Fucking hell! What the fuck was that? A real date? He thinks it is, and then what he put the it in a taxi and she was all Eminem doing on a date with that moon faced Tory cunt. Anyway, uh, <laughs> got a new sponsor today. It's the Daily Mirror. <laughs> and the films of Tom Hanks. What's your favourite Tom Hanks film? Catch me if you can. As if he wasn't trying to let us know something there. <laughs> Toy Story. Toy Story. Sex Toy Story. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, the Post. Posting. Pictures of his dick. Terminal. Lee What's Love the and Bum and Kids. Huh? What's The Post? It's a film that Tom Hanks was in. Oh, Cast yeah. Away. Is that the third yeah. one that came to your head? <laughs> the Post. <laughs> I've never even heard of it. All the Tom Hanks <laughs> films that he's won multiple Oscars for. Forrest Gump. Nah, nah, that's hack. The Post. Yeah. Forrest Hump. He humps kids in the forest. Yeah. This is this is awful. Do you know we can Allegedly. Do this? It's awful. There's certain people we can't talk about like this. I don't know, Forrest. Yes, Hump. it's I mean, paying the bills. Don't. Yes. <laughs> I really appreciate all of you fuckers and the Patreon, but come on, guys. Do you, know, you don't know Tom Hanks? I feel like I do. Yeah, but you don't. You never know anyone, really. <laughs> you don't know what goes on behind closed doors of pizza oh, parlors in the basement. You, I'd love it if you turned out to be a pedo. If I did. Just on that logic. Yeah. Hide in plain sight. What are you looking at? Escape route. Where are them wet wipes? 
<laughs> Throw them over. Have we got any more correspondence? I think we need an Let's interval. put a ladder up to the, we need to the wall and climb out this hole and do a break. I don't like it when you do that. You know, because I prepped the questions and then you sit, sit there like a young Henry VIII going, More! <laughs> more! <laughs> I mean, the guest is coming in in 20 minutes, but more! You can have a break if you want, if you need a nap. Yeah, I do want a little break. Thanks. Alfie Brown's coming in. If you're Thank- a Patreon, you might have already seen Alfie before. He did a Patreon exclusive, the only Patreon exclusive guest episode ever. Uh, now it's his public turn. But before he's here, hear from some of the cunts who give us money to do this shit. Sorry, Tom Hanks fans. What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to supremecbd.uk, one of the official sponsors of the Have Away podcast, and get yourself some premium CBD oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself. This stuff has got a million uses. It can help with anxiety. It can help you sleep. It can help with aches and pains. It's really, really brilliant. It's been helping me and a lot of other people. Now, if you go to supremecbd.uk and use the special promo code, code WORD, that's W-O-R-D, you get 30% off everything you order, and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way. That's how sponsorship works. They sponsor the podcast. We push you their way. It's a money game, baby, but you're going to get money off your CBD, and what's better than money off? Nothing. Go get it. Supreme CBD. That. UK. What? Hi. Welcome uh, to episode 111. I like the symmetry. Well, it's not symmetry, as I put the... One, one, one. It's, a, it's please, isn't it? Is it? Triple one. 111. Just three lines. Do you remember, it? you showed me a message the other day where, you, where we were, like, basically wanking each other off via podcast and WhatsApping by going, look, look at what we've done, and this is only episode 11. And you were like, imagine, imagine what... Imagine one, 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 one. <laughs> And here we are, and I've fallen out of love with him. Um, <laughs> one, one, one is very bad luck in cricket. In the first ball of the 11th over... The umpire will, uh, David Shepard specifically, an old umpire, might not be alive anymore. The big round one, white hair. Yeah, that's the fair. Um, Would uh, lift up uh, his leg and it would uh, often uh, put the bowler off. Uh, So I hope... farting? It might have been something numerically (laughs) about like an intestinal numerical issue that meant that he had to (laughs) guff every time it reached a certain number of balls. You're not not a lot of those around, is there? Like usually no, with IBS, it's not linked to numbers often. No, 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 no. The number nine. Do you know what I've discovered? Uh, we talk about my IBS a lot, particularly lately. Oh, by the way, someone has signed me up to the National IBS Network and sent me a card that says I can't wait on it. Which is it over there? Um, yeah. Um, so I can show this at any establishment where you know and get you- all the pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it works. It's basically a card that says, "Let me use your toilet, or I will shit on your floor." Um, <laughs> so you got a one for not having a mask, one to be excused shitting yourself wherever you. I that was fantastic. I didn't ask for this. Some a listener has signed me up oh, to fucking- the bladder and bowel community. <laughs> um, the holder of this card has a medical condition and needs to use the toilet quickly. Please help. Now, I don't know whether this is like a get out of jail free card that you can only use once and they have to keep it, right. or whether this is well, to like stay it's in your wallet. a voucher you get for your birthday off your nana. <laughs> yeah. It's a voucher. Shit yourself anywhere, look. <laughs> yeah. But you what have I- to go into the ladies if there's free. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it works. Hmm? Does it work it's like that? It's for real, isn't it? It's not going to be. This is a real thing. Like they've laminated it. It's plastic. Oh yeah. You know, it's not. It's not like a free pass for everything, though. Like, no, you no, can't no, no, no. It's bust you... into someone's house and shit in the nursery. And like, ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the cot. And then get your card out. Everyone's like the mum. <laughs> okay, there is a limit of what that card will get you out of. Yeah, like, you no, can't shit in a post the limit office. Is going to the toilet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I also like. I'm not sure. Like whether someone would accept this anyway, because everywhere I've worked, we've never been trained in this issue, do you know what I mean? So I imagine if you hand this in to the manager of an all bar one, they're probably going to go, I'm, I'm going to fucking live with this. It's is. not particularly good quality either. It looks like you might have laminated that yourself to try and... Well, I don't know. That's credit, credit card. card. I mean, that's gym. Yeah, let me feel that's, it. That's gym membership card level of professional. Yeah, but I just feel like you want something a bit more... If I work in Topshop, 
then maybe I want something a little bit more, like a little hologram or something. What, like, like a, a little hologram of a poo. That <laughs> like a poo one. passport. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to stamp like, oh, God, you've got a stamp here. Look where you stamp. <laughs> little so chef, you. top man, and uh, a I child's that, bedroom. I love that your brain went straight to top man as if I'm going to be on the streets of a high street and be like, where will have a toilet? And top man would be... Well, the top shop... Um, uh, Oxford Circus, mate, rest in peace, was yeah. always a great shit if ever you needed one. Did they have a toilet? Yeah, I, I, think, I was thinking of doing an app of all the places that you could shit in uh, London. We- Ooh, weird. Well, you're going to have to join forces okay. because Adam's already creating the sh- where Adam will shit in Liverpool app. Yeah, okay, but- well, you can do the Liverpool branch. Yeah. I mean, my one will have more. I think more. the app is going to be called Muck Stations. <laughs> That's good. Mock stations. That's yeah. good. That's another. My other great business idea was uh, was it nil nil dot com. So if you've recorded a football match that you want to watch after it's happened, you just was it nil nil dot com it, and then it goes yes it was nil nil or no it was not nil nil, and then you <laughs> can either a, watch it or not watch yeah, it accordingly. Really good idea. The only two it's football matches idea. I've ever avoided the score of and not watched ever are Liverpool's first leg against Manchester City that we won 3-0 in the Champions League quarterfinal of 2019. 19? 18. Mm. Um, and Liverpool 4, Arsenal 4, when Andre Arshavin scored all four Arsenal goals. Oh my God, I remember that game. Mm. Did me, Arsenal, me, Arsenal me wore the yellow? 2009? About 2009? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, something like that. But he had the face of a prick child, scored four goals, and after every single one would go, shh, to the crowd, which is my least favourite thing that footballers do. I've paid £47.50 to come in here, you little rusky shit. Don't <laughs> tell me that I can't uh, uh, make the noise. I'm, I'm, I've paid to make this noise. <laughs> Andre, Andre Arshavin has got two mentions completely independently on the podcast. That guy oh, before yeah. called me, called Adam oh, shit, Andre yeah. Arshavin. Yeah, and he was like, he looked about... 18, and he was about 26, wasn't he? Yeah, when he, yeah, yeah. he had an amazing Euro 2008 for Russia, yeah. and then Arsenal bought him, and he and he looked great. He had, he had like a season faces. and a half, and then fucked off. But the Arsenal had a succession of the. This is not a football podcast, but they had lots of those, like Kleb, which is. Uh, do you remember Alexander Kleb? Yeah. Hungarian. Bell Russian. Uh, Belarusian, was he? Belarusian. Yes. yes. Belarusian. <laughs> which is sort of. Also Russian. Yeah. <laughs> um, for those of us that know our geopolitics, it's sort of oh. a bit. You know, they've, they've, they've got special. And then there's those countries in between that are like Muslim but European. Would you agree? <laughs> the Euro Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when a they call draw? back to an old episode trying to get a guest in trouble? Alvin there we go. Is so in tune with this podcast, it's unbelievable. When he walked in before, I was like, "Fuck!" I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, He's come up with an app that we've already come up with, just beautifully on his own. And has basically done the, ah, they're basically Russian, which we did with Uzbekistan and Armenia. Ah, oh, fucking love it. Um, well, Armenia is still under um, Russian protection. <laughs> uh, and they oh, feel it? a lot of, uh, they feel a lot of kinship towards Russians and a lot of uh, Russian and Armenian have dual citizenship. Yeah. But that Russian protection is not always welcome, is it? You know, there's a lot of places under, wink, wink, Russian protection and they are shitting it. Dan's got beef with Russia. Dan doesn't like Russia. He doesn't like Putin. He doesn't like anything that Russia stands for. And he's got similar issues with China, but he can't be as vocal about them because there is the Is he on TikTok? Racial. Okay. Yeah. No, I can be hot, more horrible to the Russian premiership because I look a bit Russian. When yeah. it gets Chinese, everyone's like, oh, all right, fella, yeah. leave it. What would you have but to change about your face They are to horrible, horrible murdering, cheating cunts, aren't they? What would like, you change about yourself to look more Chinese? Okay. <laughs> what would you do? Thanks. Just, what would you do? It's not enough to get poisoned in Salisbury. <laughs> You're now trying to get me cancelled on YouTube. What would I do to look more Chinese? You mm-hmm. can't get cancelled on YouTube. It's one of the social media platforms that it's just impossible to get cancelled on. It's not like Twitter. Twitter, you breathe sideways at a subject, and then suddenly everybody goes, um, excuse me, and they do this thing. Yeah, God, well, what are you winking at the camera for? Um, uh, well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know what I'm about to say. We like to keep it just on the fairway. As yeah, a podcast, don't we? we've we've never been in trouble. We've caused no controversy ever. We, mm. We're fine, aren't we? We're just. But you can't on Twitter or whatever when you publicise the episodes. You're going. It's th- this is the time mm. that it's all over for us. Have you ever actually come close? Oh, do you not know what's <laughs> happened in the past week or so? Uh, I no. My research for this podcast has been watching, uh, listening to the um, fuck. I've forgotten his name. 
uh, the nice boy who was uh, Josh, Josh Jones. That's the fellow. Oh, Josh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you know what was really funny about that? Nice. It was the hands that got it for me. Uh, <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, I've got. The, the, yeah, you put the hands. Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, we, jo- we, I think he's, he's really. I like his videos on Twitter. I will that. tell you uh, post episode the the shit oh, we've God. been dealing with. I was getting sweaty palms there as I thought Adam Rowe was going to explain fully to Alfie Brown what we've just been through in the last week and a half. And I was like, guys, you can have started again. <laughs> Can it happen again? You know what? I'm, I'm, quite, I, I'm sort of um, comforted by the fact that news didn't reach Alfie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've muted almost everyone on, uh, but I haven't seen you talk about it. I haven't muted anybody here. Yeah, I've, we didn't. I followed you in the last week. Yesterday, yeah. Bob. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we've been. It we've, was a good moment. We've been relatively quiet. Yeah, we've been quite. That's the best thing to do. Yes. On the, in the old social bunker. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, we we we've upset a uh, you know certain a minority corner of Twitter. Group. Okay. And uh, I don't advise it. Although, still want to do this podcast. Like the great we've thing is that uh, to most people aren't on Twitter, and most people not on Twitter think everybody on Twitter is a dick. I actually don't know what your situation is or where I would come down on it morally, but <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I care enough to want to find yeah. out, but I don't care enough to want to. The um, thing with Twitter is, I don't fucked a dolphin. I've said it. No, and I've it's blowhole, it. though. It's yes. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 yeah. nominally the only true blow job. <laughs> <laughs> but I, he's got a card for it and he whipped it out. But apparently <laughs> I can rape this a dolphin. This means I get to fuck you. <laughs> fuck off. Squeaky, come here, you daft cunt. <laughs> it's laminated. I don't water. just want to swim with you. <laughs> um... <laughs> From the nationwide advert, you're not too banking in the sea. Um, <laughs> I'm a dolphin whisperer. Don't tell fucking anyone about this. <laughs> Flipper, come on. I was trying to think of Squeaky. I was <laughs> trying to think of a fucking dolphin name. Squeaky. <laughs> squeaky. Yes, the do- at least that was original, I suppose. Wasn't Squeaky when I got there, lad, but it fucking was when I left. <laughs> <laughs> not often you get a dolphin that many dolphin rape jokes one after the other but we manage it i think dolphins, you say we piss people off i don't know it's not i think dolphins are intelligent enough that they could consent like there's a if you have a but most bestiality is 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 or is necessarily rape but dolphins are so smart that they could probably go yes i'm up for that actually well, well, yeah. da- well dan's got a theory on this that, we, that we've discussed before dan thinks beyond a certain size of animal it can't possibly be cast as a crime because... It shouldn't be. Yeah. You can't fuck a buffalo against its will. If you manage to fuck a <laughs> buffalo, the buffalo wanted it. Yeah. And it would be a great, like, exercise in natural selection if we let the people who are into bestiality beyond, say, llama. <laughs> llama we, and draw, above? Draw the line at llama. Draw the llama. Okay, yeah. if you want to fuck a horse, try and fuck a horse. And then if that goes wrong... We have one less horse fucker yeah. on the earth. Have you ever seen any animal uh, porn? I seen a woman who got bummed by a horse. <laughs> have you ever bummed seen- was it? <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought that she'd go vaginal first. <laughs> <laughs> Bum shagged by no. a horse. No. You've got to be so confident at your anal dexterity. I mean, <laughs> why? Why make it more difficult for yourself? You're already fucking a horse. Yeah. I think she might have been a bit dirty, though, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not like, be- come on, be a lady. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> You've only just met the horse. <laughs> Slag. Um, uh, there was a WhatsApp video that went round certain WhatsApp groups a few years ago where a woman was getting bummed oh, by I a horse. I can't watch any of that stuff. She died. I, uh, she got no. bummed to death by a horse. <laughs> oh, bummed to death. For the Sorry. love okay. of God. I, uh, it was show- I was at 13 when I saw it. And uh, my friend at my, uh, not a friend, but the, a boy at my school who had some um, uh, issues, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Internet access. Uh, well, both in the IT lab. And used the IT lab to go on um, farmlove.com and uh, showed us all this uh, this film about oh. the, the lady getting... Um, oh. Uh, no. She Don't got do it. Not on the work network. What, what animal was it with? A horse. It was a v- variety of different animals. It were all the ones that live on the farm, really. Oh, right. And one woman. I, it was the one woman, yes. But I mean, I imagine there must have been a photographer there because... Um, it, it was pre-selfie on tripod days. Oh, right. Okay, cool. So <laughs> Farmlove.com. Yeah, yeah. 
You said that again like you were just, like, like you were doing an insert for Do you know whether it was I think filmed they need to make that less or so? Or was it, was it like a, an afternoon? Do you, did you look that far into it? No, I... Did you go on IMDb is what Adam's, <laughs> Adam's asking. What's she in? What I read the... <laughs> where's this farm? <laughs> what else is she As in? with all films, I'm not really confident enough in my own opinion until I've read Peter Bradshaw's review in The Guardian. <laughs> there, uh, so I wasn't... Uh, and what? how many stars did he give it? Uh, well, Farmlove.com. It's very hard to tell with him, but I can't quite remember. He's uh, often quite fickle with his reviews. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. As you know. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I know. You yeah. read Guardian film reviews, don't you, all the time? Um, honestly, when it comes to farm porn, I'm there. How else do you know what to think to if you don't read film reviews? Um, I do what I do with most of my opinions. I quickly decide what it is and then defend it until people get upset. Yes, I've seen you do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, you've seen that bit, have you? <laughs> <laughs> That's every You've seen week. farmlove.com, you've seen that, and you've missed our full um, um, when did when when did the story start? No, I won't. I, sorry, I won't press it. No, it's not good no. Podcasting. Adam didn't any dolphin fans in. Just rest assured that was just humour. Okay. I would love it if dolphin Twitter came after us. <laughs> Peter, surely. Peter, yeah. he loves dolphins. He does. <laughs> would you eat a dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> would you eat dolphin? Yeah. If it was a thing. Yeah, I'd eat most things. That I can't, like, sort of imagine falling in love with. Right. I mean, I wouldn't eat a dog, because, like, I've had dogs, and I like dogs. Right. But everything else is just such a foreign entity as a, as a species. You've ever met a pig? What? You've ever met a pig? I've been to the petting zoo. And you petted a pig? Yeah. Yeah? Have you been That's farmlove.co.uk. <laughs> Different website. <laughs> a bit more innocent. Um... Like, f- pigs are great fun. They, they can be your friends. They're, t- They're smart. Yeah. Pigs are smart. But I knew bacon... Before I knew pigs. <laughs> so that you you've added a different criteria in there. Yeah. That's a different moral criteria. Like you wouldn't eat if you knew like what do you call what would dog rump? Yeah. Uh let's yeah. call it Yeah, if I'd eaten that Pound first. Hide. If I'd eaten that first. Yeah. Then yeah. I, I I might have a different opinion. Is that why you've got a beagle? Because it looks less sort of tasty. He's eating it. Have you eaten it? The, the dog was delicious. Okay, good. I had a chef friend once that um, cooked everyone pigeon pitta. And there's a few people like, eh, but he did it very well. Pigeon pitta? Is that like baking a got, pigeon got, into a pitta Got bread? some pigeon meat, made it. There's not loads of meat on it. But yeah, apparently it was delightful. I'd eat a pigeon, yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck You're pigeon. a vegan. I know, but a pigeon. Oh, really? You're yeah. a vegan, but if you, d- if you decide the animal's a bit of a cunt... Or the whole species is a bit cunty. Um, well, no. The thing is that I'm not a vegan. I just live most of my days as a vegan. But the the the, like, the, the I, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. It sounds. I'm not silly. a racist. I just <laughs> attend a lot of EDL meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about God. Sorry. How do you live as a I'm vegan? I'm interested to try and unpack that uh, allegory. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I don't I like because I'm not because I sometimes have a uh, you know a bit of cheese or something. You fucking maverick! Indeed. Oh dear, what a clumsy <laughs> oaf! Oh no, heavens to Betsy! Ooh. In all the excitement, you've forgotten where your mouth is. Can we have those wet wipes? <laughs> Just throw a something. Yes, as you were. Pour the tea into your blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> me calling. Me. Call- no. Oh. After all the good work you did catching that card as well. <laughs> Um, so what do you mean? Is, is, your, is your missus a vegan? Well, she became a vegan after I became a vegan because I decided I became a vegan when I started living with my brother, who is a zealot vegan. Oh, he's hardline. Um, so he is uh, hard lines, as I believe uh, uh, people might call it. Uh, doesn't uh, tolerate uh, people not being vegan very easily. Uh, will often see people in the uh, shops go uh, wearing like a fur coat and go, excuse me, is that real fur? Like one of those sorts of interfering. Is this uh, your brother I've met? Uh, no. No. Uh, no. See, no. I don't mind that fur, anti-fur thing, but if he comes anywhere near me in a queue for KFC, there's going to be an issue. If he gets in between me and a Zinger Tower burger, that's a problem. Oh, yeah, but I don't really... I mean, the, 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 the ladder of uh, wrong, like, how do you... How are you gauging it? Like, which animal's worse? Is milk worse than beef? Because like, I'd sooner... Or some part of my brain thinks that it's more acceptable to eat 
beef than it is to drink milk because I wouldn't mind, like, I'd rather be shot in the back of the head than forcibly milked milked forever. Oh, see, I thought beef would be but worse than cheese. Well, this is my own personal... I think you, you've done what I do and what a lot of people... So my ex went vegan and she also started firing this information at me because she knew how to work me around on an issue, which was, I'm not going to look into it. So she would just slowly drip feed me information that would make me feel bad about something. Yeah. Right, do you okay. Know what I mean? So, like, the, the obvious thing to go is, well, you know, vegetarian is one step down from vegan. So, you know, but vegetarians would still have a bit of milk. So that can't be that bad because some people still have that. Yeah. But the meat's the worst thing because that's the thing that no, none of that group, those two And then groups, fur's the top of the... Yeah. But like, and then fucking dolphins is above that. The, like you say, like if you're just killing an animal to eat its meat, that's better than making it a milky sex slave for years before you chew on it. <laughs> I mean, truer words, rarely spoken. Okay, It was beautiful, but the sex bit wasn't part of it, was it? <laughs> just a milky slave would have done. It's like the a milky sex going, slave. Come on, Daisy, you fucking do it. It was your sort of- podcast brain going, this has made too much sense for too long. Yeah. <laughs> That was a valid point. <laughs> nonce. <laughs> Cow nonce. There's something vaguely sexual about milk and anything, isn't there? Uh, yes. <laughs> As somebody who is uh, uh, dating a woman who is currently... Using a breast ...milkable. Um, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't call her my milky sex slave, but she's certainly in milky indentured servitude. Okay. <laughs> He's been checking her IMDB as well. Uh, Lovely. Uh, no, she... Is she is- using breast pump? Like that. <laughs> one for YouTube. Squeezy squeeze. Uh, Is she pumping it? Uh, yes, we've got many a breast pump. Uh, Watching the nipple disappear into a breast pump for the first oh, time. Twitching it's, up the little hole like a rat's it's, nose. It's, 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 it's really brilliant. It's oh, one of those okay. things where you're like, I don't want to see this, but I cannot look away as the nipple goes, no, surely not. No. So you've got one child, another one on the way. Yeah. Did Lord of Breast Pump first time round? Um... Not for long. She is that our best? What? No, no, it's pre. Yeah. Oh, just that's a first si- half. Just a... you know, uh, Laura Dan's missus her tit is best, and she's getting compensation for no, it. No, oh. no. Okay, backtrack. <laughs> her tit ruptured a while ago, long time ago. Huh. She had a breast implant. She didn't just have an exploding tit. <laughs> so you need to know that there was an implant initially. She didn't just so one day go. This one's getting big. <laughs> Oh, like, okay, like, so it know, wasn't like like yeah, you're not overfilling a fucking. She had part she had breast implants, and there was a problem with the breast implants. And it, yeah, and it, it's okay. not I currently she had like mastitis, on. and then suddenly the like the, no. the lump went. And then we and she's getting a payout because the 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 company was sued, and she was oh, one of the plaintiffs. Okay. So, that's the real version in my head. The normal average tits. <laughs> you motorboat. <laughs> and I, I motorboated, and I leaned too hard one way right, and then she woke up the day and went, "Damn, something's not right, lad." And I was like, "Yeah, you've gone scouse for a start. I don't know why you're scouse." <laughs> This morning, she's got, I think, having one big left tits made me more scouts, lad. So have you ever been in a house with a breast pump around? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I live in a house with a breast pump. Can you breastfeed with implants? Yeah. Great. Not, okay. They're not, she's not like Hooters stripper tits. <laughs> I know. I know. They're just no. like, good evening. Who I'm can doing who, the shape. To Mr. and Mrs. Stripper tits, <laughs> her daughter, Hooters. Um... <laughs> Um, can you can you breastfeed with those? Who distributed it? No talking in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to your uh, careers meeting, Hooters McStripped it. <laughs> what do we think we might be? What j- openings might be available for you? I like architecture. <laughs> <sighs> well, <laughs> okay. Ha- have you had a go? S- stuck my dick in the breast. <laughs> no, pump. I was going. I was going you know, oh, nipple. I thought you meant. I thought I, I was milking myself. No, but like. Have you put it on your? Oh yes, to see I I because it wasn't working, so I needed to see if it worked. So I sucked my disgusting hairy nipple up at once, and it was uh, a very bizarre sensation. I thought you were going to ask, have I ever drank breast milk? Um, Finn, the, will you go on Amazon and price up breast 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 pumps? I will pay it out of my cut of this month's money <laughs> to see Adam <laughs> lose his Lebanese tit up a breast pump. That would be. Superb. Um, they <laughs> moo as well when they when they're on. Mmm. 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 Oh, Tommy. Mm, Tommy Tippy. Mm. Uh, an LV. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Or an LV. Or no, an LV won't be good enough. What he wants is a Medella. Oh, get him a Medella. They really. I'm they have. Not. 
doing they this? Have a <laughs> oh, <laughs> come because on, Because hand on heart, the truth is, I'm worried that some milk's going to come out and I'm going to be a medical marvel. Do you know what I had at school? I had a condition called gynecomastia, which is where a little bit of lady tit tissue develops under your teenage boy's nipple. And it's, and it's Latin for woman breast syndrome. <laughs> now imagine being a 13 year old boy, newly sexualized and entering into the world of fancying girls and being told by a doctor that you had something called woman breast syndrome. Adam's got it that. was so humiliating. What was the treatment? There's no treatment. It's just like, don't like, don't have a girlfriend. That's the treatment. It's like and being told you've got pussification of the bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my face hurts. <laughs> Is it still there? Yeah, kind of. You got them big old lady nipples. <laughs> it's, it's just slightly big. Like, I remember I naked wrestled somebody at Late and Live and Brendan Burns went, Alfie, your nipples look like they're shouting. And uh, <laughs> they look like you do, they? Uh, <laughs> oh, that was a peak of his career. That and the fucking Perrier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, oh, Alfie. God. Okay, oh. come on, reset. Would you, though? On, if we had a on press camera, call, how much? To, 25 quid. 25, 25 quid? 25 quid. I swear Madonna. to God, I'll do it right now. I'm, Dan, Dan, I am not please, putting please, my please, tit in a breast please, pump on camera. Please, you, have you tasted breast milk? Please. Yes. It's, it's absolutely marvellous. It's really completely beautiful. Delicious. I don't remember it I got told really... it's a bit fruity. Uh, it's sweet. That's what I mean. Um, it's certainly sweet. It's warm. And, it, and, well, it depends when you have it. Uh, oh, I didn't have it from the fridge. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, I got straight on there. So, hang on. Would you, <laughs> when you say you've tasted it, would you drink it? Or have you just tasted it? Well, the first time I ever tasted it was at a house party where uh, the first one we went to after our first son was born. And uh, you had to do what's called pump and dump, uh, which is when you pump out all the boozy breast milk that's full of fucking Cabernet Sauvignon and um, pour it into a plant pot or something uh, because oh, no, the baby can't have it. Otherwise, the Barbie, uh, the Barbie, the baby gets uh, hammered. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, whatever. Has a first white Russian. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, met, I didn't want to waste it. It felt like I'd and waste putting it in the plant pot. So I, I, I did a shot of it. But since then, I've tried to, because I'm interested in how the, and what you have to, because you can't just straight suck a nipple and have milk come out. You've got to, like... Almost pump in, it up. You, you've, you've got to pump it up. You've got to like breathe in the nipple to the back of, <gasps> like have it come to the back of your throat and then use your tongue to kind of coax the <laughs> bottom of the tip. Fuck off. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. It's and babies brilliant. just know how to do How? It. Yeah. How do you know that bit? Instinctive. How do you know that bit? What? You just know that bit. Well, I worked it out. All right. Trial okay. and error. <laughs> <laughs> you've really got to really get it back to the back of your throat and like, amazing. I think so it's a wonderfully. Would you I just, have? I you say like, you like it. Would you have it in your tea? Would you have a glass of it? It's very valuable, and a lot of emotional energy goes into the production of it. And I think spiritually, the um, the producer um, of uh, the breast milk wants the consumer to be very much uh, um, predominantly uh, a baby. Um, so I, I don't think I'd want to uh, enjoy the breast milk willy nilly and make light of all the effort that's gone into producing it. But were there some going spare, I'd definitely like to experiment with perhaps making breast milk butter, ice cream, and uh, other. Uh, uh, yeah, it's that pro possibly not cheese. I don't think it'd lend itself to a cheese. Rob Rouse has got a lovely bit at the end when he goes, "I think we took it too far when we made fudge." <laughs> <laughs> just fudge. It would be a brilliant fudge. Sweet, Lots of natural sweet. sugars. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would be a popular flavor in the ice cream parlor, wouldn't it? Well, there is a place Titty that flavor that made. Is that, that what one. you call it? Is there that was the branding. There was an ice cream parlor in um, uh, Camden that made tip milk uh, ice cream. Yeah, that that works out. Yeah, it wasn't Rotherham. That one was. And it? as no. a vegan, that's okay, isn't it? Um, yes, because uh, the... Uh, as long as the woman's, it's not factory farming it and you haven't got loads of women... Well, yeah, she's consented. The, 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 the lady Kent. would have consented. Yes, true. Um, You'd hope. You, well, I think it was part of the marketing blurb. They made sure that that was pretty much yeah. nailed on. Is honey vegan? Up top, sorry? Is honey vegan? 
It's no. there are certain vegan grey areas. Um, honey is one of them, and um, things like mussels and oysters are another. You still eat oysters, don't you? I eat oysters, yes. And it's sort of them. so that you can't be called a vegan. That... Yeah, there's um, there's a very entertaining YouTube video, uh, which uh, don't stop watching this, but uh, do YouTube, seek it out. YouTube dot com slash. Um, BBC three. Oh, sorry, I thought it was slash. on your YouTube. No, 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 no. Just search Alfie Brown vegan video on YouTube. I and also look at the one. response videos by different uh, vegan activist bloggers who. It's an app. It's a uh, the the pageantry of point missing that goes on in all of those videos is fantastic. I don't know. If, uh, uh, maybe in your uh, antagonizing of the general um, wokosphere, uh, you've had response videos made or something like that. I don't. Oh, yeah, never, never had a video. Never had a video. No. I have, well, I look forward to that because some, they are there's some valid complaints and then there's, there's some, some valid absolute complaints. nonsense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's often the way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Why muscles and why? Is it because they just... They have no central nervous system. They have no capacity for pain. They have no uh, brain. They have no well, How nothing. can you be 100% sure of that? Because oh. they don't have a brain. Because they've looked. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I you can be 100% sure that. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was so... <laughs> that was the... I mean, some people say see, that they... This, they is, this is what I mean. Like, when I put things to you and you haven't got an answer and I'm like, exactly, and you have a go at me, and but like, if someone does have an answer for me, then I'm willing to concede. <laughs> Can I, okay, well, counterpoint. The things you put at me is you go, Tom Hanks fucks kids, and I go, that's an awful thing to say. And you go, you don't know that he doesn't, and that's you thinking you've won. You went, yeah, muscles. How do you know they don't feel pain? Because they've got no brain. And then you went, all right. <laughs> <laughs> there is a bit of a difference, isn't there? You know, like. <laughs> I think you're nitpicking. Hang on. <laughs> Given that you've been subject to all these complaints, am I going to get... I can't believe you went on their podcast of what they said no, about... No, no, um, yes! No. Uh, yes! About that community of You people. dirty, muscle-eating bastard. No. Uh, we don't think so, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been Very wrong well. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be wrong again. Uh, you'll be fine. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? We've got a question about stand-up, and uh, <clears throat> we are really warming towards... You know, because the roadmap out of this clusterfuck has been laid out. Let's hope it works out. Yeah. Can we talk a bit of stand-up? Sure. Is that all right? Is that okay? If, if the yeah. listener approves. Yes. Well, I just, because you're, you're, like, if you've never seen Alfie do stand-up, he is absolutely amazing. Oh, and Alfie's going to be at the Adam Rowan Friend shows that we mentioned in the first half. All four of them. So they I mean, every was... single time you've publicised it, you've put and friends in quotation marks. And I kind of go, oh, none taken. <laughs> <laughs> and... Colleagues. And friends. <laughs> and people available who can work to a decent and standard. And people I've met before. Um, this is from Dan Johnson. Fucking. Daniel what? Johnson? Yeah, Daniel the Johnson. The mentally ill singer-songwriter, Dan. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Big fan. Yeah, before yeah, he yeah, died. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He sent a lot in before he <laughs> That's died. That's brilliant. But he also, um, you know, scheduled a lot of his emails so we get, you know, them regularly. That's really, really good. Today. He would have been into that sort of... Very uh, clever. Madness. Says, I Lids, just saw a TV show with a dentist who talked about how he feels trimming his nose hair and making sure he hasn't got any bats in the cave is a requirement of the job given the fact that thousands of people are looking upwards at his nose uh, like throughout a year. So he's a dentist and he thinks part of his job is to not be in a fucking nasally hairy mess and have bogeys up stuff because right. that's just being professional as a dentist. He said, are you ever self-conscious when stood on stage or have you ever turned up, uh, lights on you full and you know you've got a massive spot or black eye or something? If so, do you have refer do you reference it before you start your set? So are there anything in is there anything in and around stand-up that makes you nervous, makes you self-aware, or do you have any like rituals before you get on stage that make you go, right, I'm ready, I can do this? My clothes, uh, uh, so, and I think about a lot, and like... I'm a bit of a buffoon with liquids, as you've seen before when I spilled this. And there's been times where, like, I, I will normally drive to whatever gig I'm doing, wherever it is, in the clothes I'm going to do the show in. And I know a lot of comics don't do that. They'll have, like, a shirt or a jacket or something hung up in the back of the car. Particularly comics who wear a blazer or a suit on stage. They take that separately with them and they go in casual clothes. Mm. If I was going to a gig tonight, I would be intending to wear this on stage. And there's been several times where... I've had to sort of, because I've spilled something on myself on the way there, I've had to, on the way to, let's say, Birmingham, I've had to go via Stoke 
and find the fucking top man in Stoke to get a hoodie or a new jacket because I've spilled some shite on me. And I just can't go on stage with a tea stain or a... I've, bought, I've yeah. bought a fair few five pound black t-shirts because I've got mayo like down a down a shirt or something. Yeah, yeah. I once uh, I, I I took my me and Jesse took the kids to the cinema just before I was uh, on it, um, Oxford Glee, and uh, as we uh, my daughter fell asleep, and so I put her onto my lap and was holding her there, and just as the film was ending, um, she pissed onto my crotch <laughs> and. W- I was sodden, but she'd managed to piss like so acutely into the area that I would have pissed into if it was me who had pissed myself. <laughs> and I wandered around Westfield uh, desperately looking for trousers and had to eventually drive up the. And in those service stations, they have those little like, like camping shops sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah. And I had to buy some like wading trousers to go to Oxford and do uh, Birmingham Glee. In, so which is, you were in Westfield. I was in Westfield, but couldn't find anything in time. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, and then... Because uh, that's had... a fucker, isn't it? Being in one of the biggest well, shops. I just didn't time. want to be late, so I yeah, had to yeah. leave immediately. And I thought, it's better to be covered in piss and punctual. Yeah. Okay. And I, and and I can open with that decision. salmon fishing bit that I've been really wanting to try. <laughs> <laughs> I always, before a gig, will check. Uh, I will usually ask somebody else in the green room, is my nose clear? And I'll swipe my fly i'll swipe my finger up my fly, fly to make sure it's all done up um i'm a big fan of the de linting rollers don't know why anyone would give a shit about oh, yeah. a bit of lint everywhere yeah, yeah. But if, the... I, if i feel like someone in front of us going yeah. god you're linty it bugs me yeah i don't i've got several lint rollers in the house now because i just can't yeah yeah, yeah. i've yeah. been called vain as i'm getting out getting ready for a gig like people are like oh my god you're being so vain you're like it isn't vanity it's paranoia it's professional that you just well. look you just want to go do I look like a normal person? Like, is anyone going to be like, what the fuck is that? Like, it's show it business me. as well. At the end yeah. of the day, we are comics and whatever, but, you know, you have got to, You should look presentable on stage. I've looked awful on stage in the past, but I think a lot about what I look like on stage and I perform differently depending on what I'm wearing. I, I feel most comfortable on stage in a some sort of bomber jacket, like an open, like this or... That's proper gig. I've seen you in new material like hoodie. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, because I'm more, I, like, I just, I'll, I'll sometimes sit on the stool on new material as well, just look and take me time a bit more. I won't really roll up with a routine until I'm really comfortable with it. I, I I like the idea of putting something on for a gig that makes you feel, remember Dave Williams telling me that he always had a suit and a thing, and he was like, it's not necessary. I don't dress like really, I don't dress like a student and then put a suit on. There wasn't a massive difference, but for him, that was just part of what got him ready for the stage. Like, this is what I wear on stage and this makes me feel like a comic. Is there anything you wear? I there's you- like a certain thing for, an, like one of the most, and this goes for material as well as what you look like slash what you wear. How you appear to an audience. The audience can't know anything about you that you don't know yourself. So if you've got a bunch of dandruff or a big spot on the end of your nose and you don't say, and it's distracting people, they're going, fuck me, he's got a lot of dandruff. He, they're going to think that they've got, it, it just damages the power balance that's necessary 100%. for it to go well. One button on your collar being buttoned and one button not being, <laughs> but I swear to God, I've come off and gone, oh, that's why it was. Oh, no wonder they hated me. <laughs> oh, that's why they keep saying sh- racist. No, yeah. but you, that bugs me because I'm like, someone will have sat there going, "Yeah, he's good. Why is he not putting that second button?" Yeah, exactly. Or when you, when one of your buttons just comes comes to to find that out, just as you got off stage, you go ah, because you don't you don't want the feeling of anyone sat there going. Huh? And this goes for material as well. If you're doing a bit of material, like I saw some uh, a, a fellow comedian do once um, about uh, like how what a nightmare it was when he made this girl squirt everywhere and i remember seeing that and going you want us to know this and you you're try like you must be more aware of why you're telling us this than what it than how it comes across because you'll say oh god it was just such a funny story and such a nightmare but really you would you like know, us my to- dick make pussy explode like fire hydrant that's exactly right yeah yeah <laughs> Wow, was it Tom Rigglesworth then? <laughs> <laughs> that, who you, I, that sounded like yes, that's a brilliant. That reminds me of the Paul Paul McCaffrey bit about um, subtle humble brags within you know when people do that thing like that's 
Uh, amazing bit of material if you're single and you're out there. You know what it's like, guys, when you make a woman come too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be uh, sticking around. I'll be downstairs in Bar Risa. It's the same with it. Many of you ask anybody how they are. Oh, I'm so busy. It's a nightmare. Oh, you're doing, you want me to know you're doing well. Yeah. You do, you're, it's a, yeah. it, you're being performative about the fact that you're, you, you love the fact that you're busy. Oh, and it doesn't yeah. necessarily, it's not proof of doing well. It's You can be doing really well and not be busy. Yeah, I, we, we sort of mentioned this before, I suppose, which is our, our catchphrase. Um, I prefer big dick. <laughs> That's going on merch. God, <laughs> we've mentioned this before. Is big dick? But I prefer, like, just, like, I'm dead happy I've got this. I'm excited. That's yeah. what I I just don't. Oh, yeah. no, 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 like, so absolutely. Yeah, I, he, agree. I hate that whole thing. He puts too much there. I like, like big, big dick. dick. <laughs> and, and there we are lie. and so does squeaky um i uh no, no she prefers it smaller okay okay um i uh well yeah no 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 absolutely it's the um uh, what's the line from uh, ratatouille i hate false modesty it is just another way to lie yeah um <laughs> did Little Ratatouille reference. My goodness me. Um, I mean, and also, that is my, like, I <laughs> much prefer it going, quotes. I'm doing really well. I love my podcast and it's all going brilliantly. And here we all are. Isn't it going great for me at the moment? Rather go, oh, it's just a nightmare. It's so busy. It's just so, so much work on it. Ed, it's a the nightmare. Edinburgh Festival, for me, is the worst for that. Is the humble little brag of everyone at that instead of just going I've got a five star review and I'm fucking made up a work dead hard on this I'm paying nine grand to be here let's go with the next day I just hate that whole I can't believe this people saying I'm so proud of my little show my, my little, little show, show. My little proud show. of your little show you're proud of yourself and it's not uh, that's what led to me possibly inadvisedly and in jokedly to myself only referring to my last show as my massive and important yeah. show <laughs> my little show is sold out on Saturday I can't believe it well you should believe it you're in a 40 seater and you were on have I got news for you on Saturday shut the fuck up yeah my little show doesn't work if you're I in the pleasant what is it like the Pleasance Grand? Yeah. My, my, little, my little show's show. doing very well. <laughs> this is show business. It's the life we chose. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, heavens to Betsy. What a palaver. Is Edinburgh coming back, Alfie, in your opinion? Obviously, there's been a lot of chat in about how, how this industry will do. But uh, we're going to be two fringes in the bin. Is it coming back in any form? Well, they're planning just to... Sorry, I won't let you answer, but like uh, they are planning to do a, a small version of it this year. Well, that right. Well, I can't answer now, can I? I've been told. I, no. what, where, what, where, how can I speculate about it now <laughs> when I know what's going to happen? Oh. How can I be? How can I be entertainingly speculative? <laughs> and you just told me the fucking answer. They don't call him Adam Fax for nothing. <laughs> No, but yeah. do you think it's coming back? Do you think it's? Well, I know now. It is. Yes. Yes, no, I do. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I have an inkling because I heard something recently about the fact that it's coming back. Fucking hell! What do you think it will ever come back in the form that we left it in in 2019? Um. Well, I don't think Nicholas Parsons is going to have such a big audience anymore. Um, <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> there's a lot of Nicholas Parsons fans listen to this. Um. Well, yes. Uh. Uh, no, only because they're, I mean, yeah, th 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 those sorts of, yeah, it'll come back fine. Everything will be fine, I think. Really? Yeah, I sort time. of agree. Do you think I it's going to be, com do you think it's going to be all right? Yeah, I think everything will go largely back to exactly how it was before. It's just, everything's going to be slightly more expensive for everyone. Um, well, that's depressing. <laughs> like, the, uh, like, the fringe... The fringe using the pandemic to become the same but more expensive. I think, oh, well, I was, I think I, what I, I it was, does, what it, what, what it, the main effect that coronavirus will have on comedy will be content based rather than practicality based. I think practicality wise, we'll go back to being sat close to each other in rooms. But I think you can watch and um, what I'm about to say is quite heavy. Is that all right? Yeah. Great. Oh yeah, lay it on. Um, I think the way that is we, this from Ratatouille during, during lockdown. It's one of my favourite quotes. It's brilliant. It's also, that movie is fantastic. It's excellent. Um, Pat whenever I was Pat hung over well. and I was during when uh, Jesse and I were broken up and I had the kids and I didn't want to do any genuine uh, parenting that would nourish them. Well, I mean, not that not, not Ratatouille doesn't. Is I would just stick Ratatouille on and uh, let that do the parenting for me. It is a real. It's a really. It's a really good Disney Pixar. It's beautiful. 
He's got um, an old nana who's blind with a shotgun. That's really entertaining little scene as she wields that gun around at the start. My, yes. my daughter really likes that film. I've never seen Ratatouille, and you, single-handedly, with what you've just said, have just sold it to me. The good parent and the fact it's very good and it's got one of your favourite quotes. That was all like, oh yeah, I might watch that. It's like, There's a blind woman with a shotgun in it. I'm in. There's a mad Parisian midget nana who blows her own ceiling to bits. Right, early doors. It's also a very good um, uh, look at the kind of limitations of criticism, which you might appreciate as a comedian who's been reviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, what does he, what's the reviewer called? I've forgotten what the reviewer is called. Oh, piss. It's Peter O'Toole, but I don't know what is he's called. Is it Peter O'Toole? It is Peter um, Yeah, but we won't ruin his, uh, Spoil- his character development alert. for you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I'm very excited for you to see it. What's the heavy thing you were going to say? Oh, yes. Heavens to Betsy. Um, it, during lockdown, the way in which we experience uh, tragedy together as a people is usually we meet up face to face and we talk through the tragic event and via human cues, jokes, and essentially the knowledge that it's not being recorded and uh, broadcast into the ether for people to misinterpret means that we're able to communicate and dissect tragedy, uh, see the murder of George Floyd or the murder of Sever Everard more recently. Uh, But now, because we're locked down, we can't express any of these... Um, or we can't uh, talk through any of these tragedies with each other in the same way that perhaps we would have done at gigs or at offices or something. So our experience and the way in which we communicate our feelings about these tragedies is much more performative and much more uh, narcissistic because it's all through social media now. Right. So you're not getting any useful or um, uh, developmental thoughts on these subjects and I think that's going to affect the way that we do stand up because the way that we do stand up will be more people are so you you, to your credit and whilst you may have said something to upset somebody there's creativity comes from risk yeah and that I think will be lost uh cancel culture and I think is uh, uh overplayed a lot of the time but it's the fear of having people call you a cunt that I think uh, stops people from expressing themselves. And ideas move forward through uh, trial and error. And if we're too uh, critical of error, then we'll never move forward. So would you you mean that... <laughs> Very poignant, that, given what <laughs> we yeah. are not going to talk about. Um, do you mean in, in, terms, in terms of just being able to sit around or go to the pub and have a cuppa? Like, like with the, war, with the Second World War, there was obviously... When people talk about the Blitz spirit, they were in the underground system together. It was a shared experience. And so that was almost like that was but almost like a form of counselling. There was also be- no social media then. So my interpretation of what what you've just said, and correct me if I'm wrong, is social media is so black and white, and if you don't think this, you're on the other side, so you're wrong. And there's no nuance with it, and there's no you feel like that. Well, I felt like this, and it's slightly different to the way you felt, but we're we can read each other's cues and we're we're all human. So when we go and do stand up, and I go, ah, I'm playing with the line here. I'm being risky. I'm t- I'm risking for the aim of creativity. The audience is more a, a, a tune to go and well, I don't quite agree with that, but because we're all together, I can sort of wait and see where he's going. But social media is making people a lot more reactive to that's not what I think. So that guy's a cunt. It, everybody in social media on social media, sorry, it, it's the same. Uh, sense of safety that you have when you're in your car. When you're in your car and somebody cuts you up, you speak to them in a way that you would not speak to them if you saw them yes. face okay. to face. Yeah. The social media provides you the same outlet for your anger. And so you think the isolation basically enforces a uh, extremism almost, like that one opinion goes one way, the other opinion goes the other, and there's nothing to sort of well, absolutely, but drag also you back to you're the middle. not going to be if you and I have a debate about fucking something that we feel passionate about Russia or something, uh, then we might, we'll we'll listen to each other and we'll try and understand each other more because the humanity of the face-to-face experience will mean that we are involved with each other and respect each other more. If I don't know who the fuck you are, I've got nothing to empathise with and you're a cunt from somewhere else who I don't give a shit about because you don't think like me. Uh, Same as when you're uh, driving. And uh, I think the, the, I hope that it changes because... Is that not just the direction that we're going? Yeah, but and I think been... it's been exacerbated by social media because the sense of community that we have when we talk to each other has is been completely necessary removed. for these ideas to percolate and develop. 
and but there's that's an international, been removed. There's and an international element to social media, isn't there? That is was already happening. Like the internet is bringing people from all around the world together to call each other cunts and disagree with each other. Yeah. And you'll never get that sense of community or that social interaction and that cleansing almost human part of it. So is that not where we're ending anyway? No, it was, al- it was already a problem. It was already a, a, a small issue, but people seeing each other enough and had that social interaction enough that, it, it. that, that it, it sort of cleansed it. People were still cunts in their car and online, but we're getting so used to being in our car and online. And not having that, that you, it's very easy to change human behavior so that people will forget what it's like to go, I don't agree with that, but it's okay. They'll be more reactive. I think that's... And there's no long t- long lasting effect you think it's going to help us go... I, well, I, I think we'll just have to adapt. And the brain is, uh, you know, it, it hasn't adapted to social media. It's incredibly, incredibly new. And when the printing press was invented, it was there was a huge rise in uh, populism in uh, America in the uh, 18th century with... Uh, corn laws and something i can't remember my history is fuzzy on that but um the same thing is true now you've got a rise of populism synchronized entirely with the rise in um social media and uh, a, a a haughty moral uh finger jabbing certitude that is uh, wholly unpleasant whether on the left or the right yeah the flag nonces and the cancel woke yeah knobs on the other side yeah and they all hate us um, me and you. Well, yes, I feel like I've had like the my, my left wingness removed from me slightly by what it is now to be left uh, wing. And because everyone thinks that those two sides think everyone is that other thing, don't they? Yeah. If so you're everyone not, from the flag nonces, you're like, oh, you're the woke crew, and yeah. if you're not exactly like them, and then it's it's the same the other way, like, oh, you're 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 basically well, I, right wing. I also right. think before this conversation is, I mean, and I'm I'm enjoying it, so please tell me to let's all like, we'll talk about our willies in a minute. Um, <laughs> we'll have a break before that. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, I there are there's there are too many people, and the the human species is is based on communities of people. That's how we develop. That's how we feel at home, and that's how we feel. At our safest, and with too many people, we can't be successfully narcissistic anymore. So we have to be narcissistic in groups, which is why identity politics is such a huge thing now. I'm this, you're that. What do you stand for? I'm a vegan. It's why I don't like the term vegan because I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of your fucking club, as I say <laughs> in my stand-up. Um, I much prefer just being. You leave space for so much more free thinking ability when you don't scri- subscribe to any um, pre-built ideology. Otherwise, in the words of Simone Weil, you just become pliable to the party spirit. There, yeah, there was a great Sarah Silverman clip that I've seen this week. So Sarah Silverman does her own podcast now and it's solo and she occasionally will have like a caller phone in, pre-records that I she responds it. to. And a lot of it is just sort of hair, just sort of like what Bill Bear does and what Tilton Dillon does. It's just her sort of emptying her thoughts on whatever given subject she decides she wants to talk about. Bit of self-development, bit of sort of uh, examination of herself from her past. She uh, apologised for, for some old jokes uh, about Paris Hilton last week as well. But the clip I seen the other day was about the fact that she's a member of the Democratic Party and she doesn't want to be anymore. Because, and it's something I've sort of tried to touch on stand up wise. We've t- touched on it a few times on this. Is it, it, it pisses me off that people, that I know what someone will think about one of a hundred subjects based on what they think on the other 99. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can sort of pick, if you pick a Democrat, they, they almost certainly want uh, abortion to be legal and, and guns to be controlled. And if you pick a, Republican, they almost certainly want abortion to be illegal and guns to be completely mm. left as exactly. You're a Brexiteer and an anti-mask person. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, 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 And it's because people are going, well, this is our group, so we're all going to think that. And there's no sort of nuance to it at all. There's there, no, there's there, no. There is, but what happens with all those political parties, the people who end up leading them set the tone for what the party line is. There will be a lot of uh, Democrats who are pro. Is it Second Amendment? Yeah. The, the 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 right to bear arms like they will want gun- like there is grey area there o- there always is but it doesn't look like it ever because the leading lights of a party drag up so the republicans become this like this is what we are anti-abortion like and it's it, life isn't like that there's way more nuance there's way more grey area 
Yeah. And there are people that intersect all of those, but their voices aren't heard because, like we said on social media, they just become, yeah, there's two sides to the argument. And that's not, that's no. that doesn't sell. That's what I said to myself when I was saying, though, was I'm leaving it because I'm fucking sick of, like, she, she even, and what she's really great at is going, I'm guilty of this as well. She's like, if I hear a Republican start talking about something, I'm immediately suspicious of it. And I'm exactly the same with a Tory, particularly a Conservative MP. If I see them talking about an issue, my instinct is to be, well, I'm going to not like what you're saying. And that shouldn't be how it is, should it? It should be taking each individual at face value, really. But yes. It, it's, it's very hard to do that because you're like, you're one of them and you're not me. And what? we're all guilty of it. Yeah, and it's also the p- problem with the political spectrum and people identifying way too much with I'm left wing I'm right wing and then I'm a, a conservative or I vote Labour when in reality you can agree with the policies cross party can't you yeah but then Idea, you get called yes. a liberal dem- democrat and then you, you've never been in power yeah it's that's a it's an unfortunate part of politics isn't we're it we're just trying to work things out I think and uh and and live in a in a world of um these the, of, 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 of uh, politics coming into contact with social media and how that manifests itself. And um, uh, anyway, I, I, comedy will come back, but uh, you know we'll all have to be good, which is not a problem. Do you think it probably? <laughs> th- then what you're saying is it's going to look. At, give it four years, as long as this has been sort of got on top of, and there is no more like worries of lockdowns and the death rate is whatever, and it's it's basically can be aligned with a normal flu over winter. You're all saying it's going to look exactly the same in two, three, four years. Uh, yeah, but when I said that before, you sort of went, me- me- put what I said in the context of Edinburgh and meant to correct you. I think everything will go back largely to normal. Um, I have a question about, which is on topic, um, about the, and my worry wouldn't be about the future of Edinburgh. I think the future of Edinburgh is very much in keeping with the future of, at least in a, in a, in a, in a sense of what, what we're going to want from uh, culture and entertainment as a society. What I worry about the future of is club comedy and the fact that a lot of the time when producers, TV producers, are putting people on the television, they're not acquiring the comedian for the job. They're acquiring the comedian's audience that already exists. They don't want... It's not necessarily based on talent. They go, oh, I mean, it's like my joke... Um, uh, sorry to quote myself, but it's funny. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, please follow me on social media. Please do follow me on social media. It's Alfie Brown Comedian at Instagram.com. I don't like the world. I don't promise you anything. Just do it to me as a favor because that's what the world that we live in because producers are going to look at how many followers you've got and go, oh, if we put him on the program, then the produ- then the, uh, his followers might watch the program. You know, the followers are important. I don't like the world either, but there's no way that Malala was getting into Oxford without all those followers. Um, <laughs> How did Malala get dragged into that? <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't even play the frog. Yeah, she'll um, be fucking gutter watching this, won't she? Uh, Another drive-by. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> hang on, she wasn't like in a drive-by, was she? She was. She survived being shot in the head for wanting to go to school, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> as soon as you said drive by, like, like, I didn't mean that. I meant like just a because drive by is like yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> you're you're singing blue, were you? <laughs> you meant, I genuinely drive by on the my, you meant the ba- you meant the band to drive by. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, meant, yeah. I had no idea she'd been shot ever I in, don't pa- know. in Pakistan. Kn- all I know about Malala is that she was a clever little girl who went to Oxford. Yeah, great save. That's all I knew, genuinely. I don't look into shit. I watch her Instagrams now. <laughs> She's had her lips done. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an advert with her, and every time I see it, I, n- I nudge Jesse and go, She's had her lips done. <laughs> <laughs> so funny for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> uh. What was your question? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I wonder if comedy clubs go the same way of um, booking people based on the uh, following that they have rather than... Uh, and the actual so skill funny. of stand-up and club comedy, in a sense, is um, it, 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 it is less valued in the future. I have How speculated... can that happen? I, I've spe- we've well, talked about it. We've literally talked I've about it. I've speculated on this uh, both publicly and in green rooms and stuff. 
I've thought for a while that comedy clubs will end up a bit more skewed to the American model of club comedy, which is this weekend at Hot Water Comedy Club is Alfie Brown plus support. Yeah. And it will be, because, like, as a lot of our uh, regular listeners will already know, club comedy in the UK, as a general rule, there's the odd bit of money that changes, but in general, certainly at, like, the glee clubs, every act's on the same money. Everyone's on 200 quid, 230 quid, something like that, and it doesn't matter what spot you do, you're seen as doing the same job as everyone else, and that's what you get paid. And it's sort of seen as a fair way to do it. Occasionally, there'll be a club where the middle spot gets a bit less because they're a less experienced act, and maybe sometimes the headliner gets a little bit more or the compare does because they're there all night. But in general, the idea for club comics in the UK is that everyone gets a similar fee. I think it will end up a bit more Alfie Brown plus support where a headliner is on 500 quid and the supports are on 120 instead of everyone being on 200. This is why I, this is we- why I disagree, because most clubs already have supports on 120, 140, and a compare. And Do they? I mean, the standard. So, so say the Frog. Say we use the Frog in, Man- in Manchester as an example. Like, the headline will get 500. Shouldn't use of any that's more culturally important. The he- <laughs> okay. I was thought you were having a dig, and actually, you know, you're on their side. Um, if you put the headliner's fee up to 500... What, what are you dropping? It's 160 to middle, 160 to support, 200 to compare. What's getting dropped? I think the compare will go down to 150 and I think the two supports will be 100 quid. So you're going to pay the headliner 450 and that act, in theory, can bring tickets in. Yeah. yeah. But So why would they not want to just do their tour show? Because, like, if they toured at a venue of the frog size, then they might not fill it. They might make less than 400 quid than, from a tour show. But well, who are we talking about? More, more regularly than they can tour. And they can try out new stuff. They can. They should be at a level yeah. whereby they can... I can't see I mean, this. I don't like it and I, I don't think it'll work. as an uh, industry thing because in Britain, everyone can drive to every gig. There are loads of comics and you can, within the day drive for 60 quid of diesel to most gigs around the country. In the States, not only is it a cultural thing of like, you know, this is how their clubs do. We have guys who sell, so like Theo Vaughn or like Santino, that level of like not superstar, but getting up there, will have the weekend in Tampa and they'll play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They'll be flown in, they'll get five grand and the support acts are local. How does that work in this country? I when don't it's think all so. localised and I and the frog, I've been there when, sorry, I've no, been no, there where someone from TV who's got a bit of a following because of TV is headlining over acts that are better at playing the frog. And as you all know, it's a fucking arse over tit night. Yeah. It doesn't. It, the the clubs hate that. Rob, they want the headliner to be the best act. Yeah, a hundred percent. But that I don't. I, I'm not saying this is going to happen early next year. I just think it's heading that way, and it'll be down to the sales. There's so many comedians now, so many, and so many of them are on social media, and so many of them are, are, are massing social media followings. And if if clubs don't go that way, then what they're going to have is. There's going to be someone who's this month's TikTok flavor of the month. I actually don't think TikTok's going to translate into ticket sales much, but like people who do a lot of Instagram videos or Facebook or whatever, like Mo Gilligan did and like Paul Smith did, they're the first two that have have really gone on to sell massive theaters. And Paul Smith's done a, a fucking arena in Liverpool. In in five ten years time, there's going to be two hundred of them. Do you know what I mean? There's, I just don't. I just, um, can't I be think, two, it can't be 200 Paul Smiths. I don't, think, no, I don't no, think they no. can be, but I also think what I meant when I, like rather than that model, which seems to be a little bit too much of a, like, it seems that in all different countries, like Sydney Comedy School has a completely different system. Uh, America, they've got a different system. We've got a different system here. And it all seems a little bit too complex to change the way that we work because each place has got a system based on, uh, you know, the, geography and the way in which they work best which is fine but I think what I meant more was that rather than say you've got you know three acts and a compare on at insert comedy club name rather than them all being people who have spent the last 10 15 20 years honing club uh, skills uh, learning how to deal with this weekend crowd you've got people on panel shows on tv now that can't play these gigs, that don't get booked by these comedy clubs. So are comedy clubs going to start booking people because they've done Mock the Week, uh, despite the fact that they might not be as bankable 
as somebody who isn't on these panel shows, uh, but can play the room. Only if they sell tickets. But have been on Mock the Week. That's that's the way everything's heading. Kaz been on Mock the Week. Yeah. I suppose these places, and I'm... I'm but if you've been on Mock the Week, you don't necessarily sell tickets. No, There's absolutely. people who've done Mock the Week a handful of times who've got less Twitter followers than Carl. Um... I think yeah, if you can sell tickets, like you want to do your own shows. But I mean, Adam's right; it makes sense. Yeah. But then it also makes sense that it just doesn't happen. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like the theories. I was being, I was exaggerating with the two hundred. Yeah. But let let's say there's even fifty, or, or eighty, or whatever. A lot of comedians who've amassed a following, and I'm, when I'm putting comedians. I'm not saying people who necessarily great to stand up. What I mean is people who've amassed a following from making silly videos. If comedy clubs are trying to compete with. Uh, one or two of them being down the road selling a hundred tickets at the small theatre. Like, what, what's the one in Manchester? But club, but comedy clubs just sell there to yeah. their mailing list, like, don't they? Oh, the the Glees, the Frog. There's only a finite amount of people who are going out to see comedy. And uh, if they're elsewhere would... going to see these people who've amassed things, yeah, yeah, comedy clubs will slowly go, where the fuck are our audience going? How do we get them back in? Well, that guy who was down at the, the Corner House Theatre last week doing his show... Maybe in three months' time, we need to get him back. And instead of doing him there, we'll just give him 400 quid to close. Problem is, it will knock... Say, so say one of the amazing honed circuit comics who doesn't have a social media following. Yeah. Who, who like, you, we, could, we could be cunty and pick the name now yeah. and say we massively respect them, but they don't sell tickets. And then say, say Josh Jones, who we had on this couch in a year and a half, starts getting a bit of TV, like, you know, like Tom Allen has done. And then... All of a sudden, the frog are like, "We want Josh to close, but actually, we've got Andy Askins in the middle because he's willing to work for one twenty. Yeah, it's a fucking weird night, isn't it? It is. It becomes no, you're, weird. You're, but you're judging it on the fact that the audience of the frog at the minute are people who don't know anyone on the bill. If you put that bill that way round now, Josh is great, and I love Josh. Oh, I, lo I love Josh. But yeah, but it's an unnatural. You, you you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily want him to close after Andy Askins has been in the middle because it's just a, an experience thing. But that's because you're thinking of the frog as being full of the people who are currently at the frog. If there's a they're not just going to disappear though. No, but the, if if you're booking Josh Jones to close on the, the reasons I'm saying, it's because you think half the room are going to be there for Josh, and if you have half the room there for Josh then that balance is yeah. then the right way around. But then you've got half of the room that are just there because it's the frog and it's been there 25 years and it's Gemma's birthday. And half of them will still think Josh is good and, yeah. they're, they're, and laughter's infectious and the other half of the room being there for the... If I was Josh, I'd still want to play half the frog on my own and see if I could build it from there and take the bigger fee. What do you mean? If you sell 100 tickets at the frog, yeah, you know, at 14 quid a head... You're going to make more than 400 quid, 500 quid, aren't you? No. You, well. You know? You, you, if you sell 100 tickets to the frog of 14 quid, that's 1,400 quid. By the time you've paid promotion, by the time you've paid for your, your agent's fee, by the time you've paid for flyers, posters, the frog's taken their cut and paid for the support act, you're not making more than I'm speculating that the frog would pay you. Really? You, you're not out of 1400 quid you I get, think if you were doing you it as part of because no 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 but you, the, the cost of the flyers and the person and the da, 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 wouldn't factor in you'd be doing it across a tour so you would probably make more if you've got a good deal and your tour person wasn't I, fleecing you I'm not just I, 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 Adam's like there's I get it you get roughly a third of the gross as the act when you tour Right, so 1,400 quid, roughly a third of that, is about, what, about 470, 480 quid. Yeah, but then Josh is taking all the risk of putting that tour show on. But, but, you're, but then there's a risk if you're getting booked for selling those tickets, a headline act on a Saturday night. If it's roughly the same money, I'd rather do a one-man show. I, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Like, if, if... To have a room that all love you... Rather than a room that aren't that bothered, they just came because it's Gemma's birthday. I think you would, if you're doing a club, you're doing that like two or three times a year. So that's you and and you're doing a tour show. I just I see the reasoning. I just can't see how this is going to play out. I, I I might be dead wrong. And like I say, I don't think this will be next year or the year after. I'm it saying fucking better not be. I need some gigs, mate. Five, six, seven, eight years down the line, I think that's where it's going. He's organising some gigs if you want one. I, I, I'm i on. Okay, good. I'm on. And, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm taking a third of the gross. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you're already sort of seeing it. There's still, there's, it's already happening. 
This the year. odd gig pops up where people are like, uh, the, the fee to close is 200 bit more if you can put bums on seats. That's already happening. I could see it happening on Thursdays and Fridays. I think comedy clubs might be like, we can do Saturdays. But I, I know what you mean. But that, that's not our And may we, may we honestly be still doing this glorious podcast, HMS Absolute Bullshit, in eight years when you're like, see, you fucking Will you have <laughs> me, uh, I'd love it if we were still here in eight years. Will you have bro. me on for episode 222? Oh, 100%. I would like you on every second month, mate, because you <laughs> okay, are great. vintage. Um, that is a hell of a first half. Because he's quality and yeah. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a break. We'll have some money cunts. Uh, tell Stop us. Stop calling them money cunts. <laughs> I like the you money. You can't call them money cunts. Seriously. Why? That's so funny. Why? That's <laughs> funny. They don't watch it. <laughs> All they care about is us spouting their shite. Oh, I thought you were talking about your Patreons. No. Oh, God, no. (laughs) sponsors. Okay, who are you sponsored by? Can I do an advert read? Oh, 100%. We're sponsored by Uh, Manscaped, Final Runner, Supreme CBD. Beer 52. Beer 52. uh, Bettinggods.com. Oh, bettinggods.com. Football Index? Nope. Nope. Okay, Uh, shut up. uh, Is that it? Is that everyone? Oh, and uh, farmlove.com. Farmlove.com, yeah, They've just yeah. got on board, so that's going to be interesting. Yes. Let's have a break. Money cunts. Happening, lids. Do you like a cheeky little gamble on the old sport and world? Well, I do, but I'm sick of getting beat by the bookies. Now, I've been going to bettinggods.com since they started sponsoring this podcast. They're a great sponsor to have on board, and they are the best tipsters in the betting game. Anything from tennis to ice hockey to footy, rugby, horse racing. If you want tips when it comes to betting, head to bettinggods.com right now, and they've got all sorts to help you beat the bookies and get a few winners. Go get some winners. Don't be a loser. You don't want to be losing your bets. You want to be winning your bets. Bettinggods.com. They're going to help you do that. And we're back. Guess who's back? It's time to have a word with Adam Brown. Did you start each section of the song? Little sing song. No. You can't hear it right now, but the theme tune is playing. I wrote it. Because I'm a songwriter, as well as a comedian and podcaster. Uh, is that the big alto sax? Huh. <laughs> And ha, ha, ha. welcome to well. the Have a Word podcast with his dick. Welcome to the Have a Word podcast. <laughs> From the, yeah, because yeah. he's got a very big urethra meters. Ureth- is that right? Do you yes. know what that is? Is that like pussification of the bum hole? <laughs> sort of. It's not far off. It's the medical term for the hole of your penis, which you would know as your roo hole. Roo hole. A roo hole. Talk to me. Roo holes drag race. Um. <laughs> Yeah, my roo hole. Yeah, that's what I refer. I, I, that's what I call my because there was I, I I used to call it uh, yeah something xenophobic or racist actually. Yeah, um, we, all right, all right, fucking vegan. So did they half an hour ago? <laughs> yeah, so did we about quarter past three this afternoon. Oh, yeah. did you refer it to something as your as as yeah the thing you mustn't yeah. But what we've worked out is we're that Ad- Adams is so, yeah. Oh, well, we were very careful. This is a public episode. <laughs> we made sure that it was soaked in irony. Yeah, Adams is so massive. It's actually called the is it the yawning Caucasian? <laughs> Surprise, Caucasian! I I prefer the yawning Caucasian. <laughs> this is mouth. Yes, your know, eyes close when you yawn. Oh yes, stupid <laughs> cunt. <laughs> The shocked Cyclops. <laughs> Adam yawns really weird. <laughs> right, okay. We've had a few uh, have a words come in. Very serious. And we've had some fun here today. We've had some serious chat. But this is people's lives, so act accordingly. Don't draw a cock. Thank you. Hi, Lids. Will you have a word with my boyfriend or me? Basically, he's been on furlough since November. And in the past couple of months, he started chilling with a bunch of car nonces who sit in Mackey's car parks and all drive shitty cars. He doesn't even drive. He's like 10 years older than me. He's chilling with girls as young as even 16. He says it's because he's bored in lockdown and friends his own age are busy with children, etc. I take the piss out of his mates and say it's weird that he chills with... He does a lot of chilling here, mate. That he chills with girls. Some of them are slags, by the way, younger than me at his advanced age. Am I wrong to do this? Should I just let him chill with whoever he wants? Or am I right that it's weird? Ch- I swear to God, she's put chilling with people like this and that he needs to grow up. I didn't want to mention her name. She didn't say that she wanted to be anonymous. But, but probably do you want to make best up a, to. Do you want to make up a name? Daniela Riv- Rivington. 
Um, <laughs> as I said, her age. Um, yeah, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Because she could be forty and he could be fifty, and then it really, it's then weird. it really, that it's weird that she speaks like that. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no way. Well, she's at least twenty, isn't she? For him to be thirty, gone. You know what I mean? Like she, she's not fifteen, is she? No, all it says though is that he's ten years older than her. Exactly. So that oh, in my head, that's. Should we guess that she's like 18, 19? I'm going to say she's near 20 because if right, and he's years near, older... He's nearly 30. She is 15 and she needs 25. That's he all can't be doing this, can he? Yes, Adam. Go for it. Lay down them rules. Go on. Because there's absolutely no way that he's just going to sit in cars with 16-year-old girls. He's trying to get his pipe smoked, isn't he? Yeah, in a Vauxhall Nova. Yeah. His exhaust yeah. pipe. Yeah, Skoda Fabia with a spoiler and... Uh, uh, microwave rims. in the boots. Do you remember the Russell's advert from 2007? I know, I know we're not, you know, millionaires, but if, if we do well, like seven or eight years from now, when I'm completely wrong about the circuit and we're rolling in it, I would love to waste some money on souping up a piece of shit. I would, I would enjoy real, that. Yeah, to get a larder and, um, <laughs> you know, take it to a the Jaguar larder. factory and get them to put a proper engine in it. I don't, great. can I just say, I'm not sure the Jaguar factory are being like, Custom builds. Do you not think you'd have to take it to like a custom? No, they are. They they did it. They did a larder at the Jaguar factory on an episode of Top Gear that I once. Watched. Yeah, Alfie, stop being stupid with this no, fantasy. I'll be a millionaire. No, I, <laughs> I genuinely didn't think like a factory like Jaguar. Would well, be I like, think they did it for that episode of a TV right, program. Right, right. You're rich enough, and you can do anything. Yeah, just that, buy that, Jaguar. That's that's the uh, the ultimate truth. Right, you've, so, so I, I give you a hundred grand to soup. What to would do you do that? Go? I would not get. I felt very sorry for all the people on Pimp My Ride who. Um, uh, like Westwood or uh, exhibit, exhibit, yeah, uh, would uh, speak to, and then like put like a, a bowling alley in the back of their <laughs> Fiesta, <laughs> and then <laughs> and they go, oh my god, and then, uh, everybody would have to be uh, shocked, but like literally fold themselves in half with joy, going, oh my, oh my, god. they would all, it was really over the top, and then like there must, I wanted to see the bit where. They call up their insurance company and go, <laughs> listen, <laughs> exhibits just put a bowling alley in the back of my Fiesta. Any modifications? I love <laughs> how tenuous the links were. Like, oh, he's a nurse. That's what, like, an operating theatre. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was so tenuous, the links. Because he had nothing to go for. He's a Republican. Let's put an abortion clinic in. Oh, that was too far. That, that was, was not too far. Should, that was classic should, satire. Should have, said, um, should have said gun range. Or combine the two. Okay. Yes. Gone. That's too far. That one. <laughs> there you go. That one. I think that's good humour. Anyway. Um, but write Wait, in. Really Let us well know. Written. Yeah. Uh, it's very rare you get a well-written shooting a baby in the head joke, and that's what you did, isn't it? Oh, that's geez. what you did. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. It's worse that you want to line things. <laughs> Your you know support makes me feel more Sorry. guilty. <laughs> they never did the engines up of the cars. No. They only did the aesthetic of the car. They did the interior, the seat in. But they never actually the fixed the car. So how it's funny be a would it be, though? If no. They, yeah, yeah. If at the end of the episode they'd just done the engine. And then they just <laughs> took his blindfold off and he just seen. This it's is the same piece of shit. Now, now Take that's... It for a drive. <laughs> so, so once you've souped up your Nissan Micra and you're like, zoop, 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 yeah. which is fun, wouldn't it also be good to get a piece of shit like Fiat Cinquecento 2002 and then make it look identical but give it like a V8 engine? So everything looks crap, and it's got rust around the things, but actually, you've supercharged, and you lift up the bonnet, you're like, what the fuck? And there's and like a fucking takeaway in the back or something, like a Chinese takeaway. No, but I'm, I'm, no, there's n <laughs> no, the opposite. You don't touch the car ah. apart from the engine. So people are like, who's this dickhead in a yellow Cinco Trento? And then you're like, vroom, not to 60 in like 2.8. It feels like the answer to this question problem has become a lot more for the boyfriend than it has. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what I'm getting souped up, get a couple of 16 year olds. What I'm reading from this is, he needs Mc a Rib, car. The McRib's back. Mate. This guy's having a great time. <laughs> these, hang on, these 16 year olds are slags. Quality. I've left a fart out, by the way. Oh, <laughs> Just Ed, so you know. Where's the spray? Let's give him an asthma attack. <laughs> he deserves it. Like a naughty dog with a water bottle spray. You dirty little scouser. Right. Don't have an asthma attack. Um, I do not like the fucking bellends that hang around McDonald's car parks all parking up and shouting shit into each other's windows. Yeah. I just, I, maybe it's because I was never part of it. 
But I've, <laughs> have you ever? I've never <laughs> seen <laughs> shouting each other's windows. No, the Mackey's car park souped up. The, the souped up car crew in Mackey's, Mackey's I mean, car I, park. I don't know it to Do be. Do you a, live a in a really bad film? <laughs> I don't know it to be a McDonald's specific phenomenon, but they they meet with their cars in. And I can understand it more. It's, it's a lot of McDonald's car parks. In yeah. these COVID times. Yeah. Uh, when you're um, uh, not, these unprecedented COVID times. Um, uh, Sometimes have it worse as well. Like Wrexham apparently is absolutely crawling with boy racers. There's nothing to do there. Souped up fucking like big, is it big boar sports exhaust or big boy sports exhaust? Yeah. Like, and then dump valves like zoom, zoom. Yeah, yeah, those should all be And illegal. they're always... Un None of those guys is like 25 and randomly spent 48 grand on his car. <laughs> yeah. And he still lives with his mum. None of them are dating like a 32-year-old who's like like a like a well-paid nurse. It's always like some I do want rough-looking 16-year-old girl who you're like, are you being a weird like car park child trafficked? Yeah. What's her name? Diana Picklington or something? Yes, that's it. <laughs> Diana Picklington. Um, Good memory. I, uh, I don't think it is that. Um... <laughs> I, I do want to say that you must not tolerate this boyfriend and you you must uh, 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 yeah, this uh, make isn't him a conversation, change his ways. This one, is it? This isn't no, a no, no, no. She, You need to leave him today. Also, I actually think you need to take a bit of a look at yourself for putting up with this for so long. <laughs> you're, you're not entirely blameless here. The fact that you've had to ask for outside help to know whether you're obviously um loser... Uh, boyfriend is a loser or not? Loser slash creepy, nearly nonce. A febophile is the word. And it would be is better a if he had a car. R. Kelly. He's the 29 year old that has to get a lift there. Ugh. At least 29. I'm a new word R, 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 R. Kelly is an a febophile. He is a, uh, um, or a febophile. It's two different pronunciations, but it, it's the uh, sexual attraction to uh, teenagers. Oh, wow. Because I, oh, oh, Ellie, R. Kelly is... Um, Underage teenagers or like, you know, the ones that are definitely legal online. I think it's just young looking teenagers. Oh, right. Uh, Grey area I don't know, though, isn't it? I don't know if it's... Uh, I don't know what it is. Because R. Kelly... Um, R. Kelly would have sex with underage girls and then uh, make them drink his piss and call him daddy. We've all been there, though. But what we're not like Does he do getting to grips with is how difficult... It would be He's to drink really... piss and call. I don't know if you tried that, but look, look, look. oh no! <laughs> it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Is that, is that worth it for the podcast? <laughs> Do you know what I think about that? Right, so that's poignant. not the first time this month has been spit on that. Couch. It's like Alfie has tuned into this podcast spiritually without actually seeing any of the things that we've literally done. happened. Yeah, so. What, somebody was taking the piss out of somebody trying to drink somebody's piss and say daddy at the same time? Yeah, that's yes. yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly what happened. We, it's just deja vu. That's yeah, mad. it was Josh Jones, but we'd, stop, we'd stop recording. <laughs> Do you know how fucked up you've got to be, sexual fantasy-wise, to be fucking an underage girl and then watching her drink your piss and still being like, this hasn't this quite done it else. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to think you're my daughter as well. Uh, like, I don't know how he's still got a career. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think I believe I can fly. They're is... killing it, man. They're killing it. I love it. I, 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 R. Kelly would be a great guest, just in terms of numbers. You would, yeah. you, if we're doing the nonce hunter episodes, this yeah. is from the first half, Alfie. We're not just had an aneurysm. R. Kelly is a guest. No. No? No. No. All the other paedophiles, fine. <laughs> yeah. This one. Yeah, well, he yeah. could sing. No, he can, he's got some bangers, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. In Gotham City. Woo! He, he can come on if he'll sing us out. That's my stipulation. Cool. World's greatest. But yeah, you need to leave your boyfriend. Oh, yeah. And I'm that little bit of hope when my back's against the road. That uh, used to get I'm sung me. in assembly every week in my little school. Shut up. The my little school, up. but so proud of my little school. What did yeah. you? Have, what? <laughs> <laughs> How many did it see? Yeah. Five hundred. <laughs> so proud of my little school. <laughs> Just tiny. This size is small. Yeah. Has someone uh, sung it or did you play it? Been, uh, have you been off steady? No, yet? we would sing it, like you know, like as a hymn. Like, because it's a Catholic school, yeah. so we would do hymns did in you assembly. Did you have the instrument on? Yeah. Did you all just a cappella? Yeah. <laughs> what did you gargle? 
I, I think it was a cappella. I think oh, the God. whole, the it's whole school. Quiet. For, so it's it's year four, five, and six. Three, four, three, five, four, and six, five, isn't and it? Six, yeah. Yeah, we'd all just be there, just going, "I'm that little bit of hope when my back's against the wall." And then the teacher would like, li- you know, like when, <laughs> you know, like when a singer sings the next line, so that the whole crowd know it. Do you know, like, or like says it. Like Robbie Williams will be like, uh, I sit and wait. Cause salvation. And then they'll go, Cause salvation. And you go, Let my wing unfold. And they'll go, Let my. The teacher be doing that. So we'd all be going, I'm a little bit of hope. And the teacher be like, When my back's against the ropes. And we'd all sing it. Did you yeah. do Ignition next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was trying to think, how can I top this with a funny one? And that's why Car's great. <laughs> Sipping on coke and rub. It's the freaking weekend, baby. I'm about to have you. Oh. Can you imagine the whole of his little school? Bounce, 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 bounce. This all popping in the fresh navigator we had. Honey's to the left, just like the party was catered. I had fellas on my left. Fellas on my right. Honey's on my right. Yeah. Put them all together. We can have a good time. And after the show, it's the after party. And after the party, the Round about four, you gotta <laughs> clear the lobby and, and take us to a room and, and call me daddy. <laughs> call me daddy. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, break up with him, you silly shit. <laughs> a lot of the girls who email in already know the answer to yes. this. When the, the have a word female like contingent is always like, guys, maybe I need you to have a word with me. And they always are. It's like, this guy was like, we were sleeping together for six months and he said he didn't want a relationship. And now he won't answer texts and he's like seeing someone else. Should I just let it go? You're like, yes. As soon as you press send, you should have known the answer and we love you. But please make the right choice. This is not who you're settling the down thing is, with. Though, I feel like this girl is far too far gone because she started by saying, have a word with either him or me. So in her head, this wasn't a slam dunk. This is the biggest... No, because he's a This is the biggest tap-in of all time. Your 30-year-old boyfriend is fingering 16-year-olds in a Mackey's car park. It's not okay, and you don't have to put up with it. That's a reach. Yeah. Like. And, uh, and, I mean, even if he's just hanging out, it's still sort of weird and desperate. And uh, But, I mean, it's maybe it's, uh, you know, institutionalised uh, misogyny, and she thinks she's not... Worth of course, because he's coming there. home and she, she's going, where have you been? What are you doing? And he's like, oh, you're fucking mental. You're controlling. You're trying to tell me where I can and can't go. So she's like, oh, well, maybe I am. Gas you're not. Me. You're not, mate. You're not. He's not great. At least get a car. At least get a car. I mean, and then it's all right. At the very least. least. <laughs> yeah. I would say that that's actually not enough at yeah. this stage. <laughs> oh. at, You've at also the got very to stop le- driving it to McDonald's to hang around. <laughs> Promise with, me uh, we can soup up cars. Wait, oh. Of course we can. <laughs> But if you're going to finger a 16-year-old, at least make sure you can drop it off home afterwards. Do you know what I mean? That's just basic human decency. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> not, we're not cutting that out. That one, that one needs to breathe. Lids, I think you might have to have a word with me. I told my mates that I shaved my chest and my treasure trail one day in college. For a laugh, they bought me Veet hair removal cream for my birthday. First few times I used it on my chest and trail. What's this trail bit since? It's but then the I got is the, the goes down path. to your belly from your belly button to your cock. <laughs> okay, is that the Latin for it? Okay. Um, <laughs> first few times I used it on my chest and trail to his cock. But then I got curious. Could I use it for my balls? I made sure no one was home the day I tried. <laughs> and let me tell you, fellas, it slid. Oh God, he wrote. Let me tell you, fellas, it slid it off like butter. I was I was smooth as a baby. Since then, I've used it on my pubes and I've experimented it on my arsehole. I'm quite a hairy man from the waist down and I'm not going to lie, when I'm working out or using my exercise bike, my ass gets quite sweaty. And the odd times, there's a patch of sweat where I sit since using it down my crack. I've had no patches on chairs. I'm wondering, is it wrong to use it for my pubes and ass? Should I keep using it or should I just buy an electric razor? Cough, lawnmower 3000, cough, manscaped.com, cough, use word for 20% off. It's actually literally written out. It's almost like someone from Manscaped has sent in a half a word (laughs) to just get some extra advertising. So uh, this is, uh, this lad is from, he's called Alex. 
I, I, I'm was saying his name. So Shiny Alex from Shiny Town is saying he's using V on his pubes, his balls, and his arse. What we're saying, is it weird or is it just good arse management? I think it's good arse management. I want to pull you on something you said on, I don't know whether it was Patreon or... You didn't listen. Last, the, I did listen. I did. Oh, what did I say? On the last episode or the last Patreon, I can't remember which one, you mentioned the fact that you can't wax your balls. You're like, because it's loose, looser skin. Remember? I, I, this is not from experience. Yeah. But from, from, I've had my backs whacked. Yeah, but isn't there waxed. a thing called a back sack and crack? So th- isn't that your sack getting waxed? Yeah, yeah, you might be right, but I just, for me... But you don't want it. If you've got quite a... You know, your ball sack can be quite viscous, can't it? It can be like... it can Viscous? No, do you know what I mean? Like, it, it there's a lot of give in your testicles. Yeah, there's a lot of there? loose skin. So if you've got really strong wax and a strip and Big Barbara from the waxing place and she pulls... I worry that it went with. <coughs> I would be worried that my yeah, exactly. I'm exactly. I, I am exactly with you. I'd but be worried that my ball set was going to come off. Again, when we get the breast pump, I will get some <laughs> waxing strips on, and we will have an unusual patron exclusive <laughs> where I milk you and wax you. <laughs> We're not getting the breast pump. Please. It's already ordered. Um, can I say to you? Really? No, we'll order. Finn. Finn. Finn's I'll wide think. then. Fuck Finn. Over to you. I would say to Alex that it's no, it's not weird at all. Using V on your wherever you want is fine. However, writing into a podcast to ask for <laughs> approval about it is extremely weird. Okay, listen, you, you're attacking the institution here. Uh, if you I'm, do I, this, am, I am the Harry and no- Meghan. Uh, <laughs> I'm not ready to laugh about that. Okay, sorry. Um, you, you can't... <laughs> <laughs> you can't call them out for emailing in that's the hot you've, you've got to encourage the email and then take the piss i mean thank you for emailing in you shiny smooth weirdo okay then fine more power to you mate you, you know you've got it's 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 good and conscientious um procedure in the uh, uh engaging in oral sex with people it's always just a little bit nicer if you've got a nice uh smooth knob i imagine yes. you're quite a hairy man do you what's think the, well, well, compared to me, I think what he means is you've got a beard and long hair. I don't yeah, think he knows. I mean, hairy from all cock. The, oh, cock. Do you I, shave your cock? Uh, <laughs> it, it's trimmed. I shave my cock. I bick my cock. Bick your cock. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand where the hair on your cock is. Honestly, you get the odd hair. Like it's not like that. No. I don't. It's not like a kiwi. No, I do. It's do just you? you get the odd like thing halfway up your dick. Oh, on your actual shaft, yeah. you get yeah. hair. The, the odd one. Not the bell. You don't... If you've got a hairy bell, no, but something's like, gone wrong. Yeah, that's the actually... Odd one. That's a jellyfish, not a cock. Um, yeah, no, I don't have a... I, no. No, I'm, no, I'm... I'm um, oh, I've got some stragglers on the shaft. But what about your, your pubic thatch? Does that... Is that there? <laughs> pubic thatch. What's it's, that? The top? It's your pubic hair. Oh, oh, this bit. Have you ever been yeah, to the yeah. Cotswolds? <laughs> yeah. In the room? So I, I used me Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 for that. Yeah? How much did it cost you? Fuck all. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and it will cost you 20% off RRP if you use the promo code word at checkout. Manscaped. Doc. I think it... I just... Fair enough if it works for you. But to be f- completely baby bald everywhere. Uh, I just... I think girls don't want a pew in the mouth. I just don't want to... I th- don't think they want to see no. toddler, um, toddler crotch. Like a chicken. I, again, I think it's open to... like Some people might want that and some people might not. And I, I wouldn't want to veet my... Not only because of the chemical element that I, you, you've got very your your skin around that area is a uh, is is very much a partially uh, permeable membrane that can uh, let in lots of disease and indeed chemicals. Is That's there why a, it's quite good to brush the bell end with cocaine if you want to get high. I've never sh- done cocaine, but that is a way that some people do it. Sure, talk. Yeah, because wow. because the the, the, the the bell end lets in. Yeah. That's I, a, yeah. a hell of a way to be I don't, caught yeah, yeah. doing coke in the, I know. In the That's why if you don't want to drink It's, it's bad etiquette grass, to stick your dick you in the just bag as well. Stick That's your stuff. dick in the wheatgrass shot and then you imbibe, imbibe the minerals that way. What brush do you use? Like an oil no, or beam? No, I made that up. But the, the first <laughs> bit was true. Um, first bit was true. Pill up the bum, coke on the dick. Uh, <laughs> no friends. All right, well. Vita away, Alex. Vita away, Alex. Yeah, what I and do down there is... Um, have we not just done this literally two episodes ago? Like, uh, I, with the waxing thing. Yeah. And he told us everything. Yeah. I go down to there. Alfie's ass, though. He wasn't here. I go down to there, <laughs> just above the dick, with yeah. the manscaped. Uh-huh. And then everything below that, I take a Gillette Mac 3 through. 
Is the man? Oh, is the man? They're going to milk real is nice. The, <laughs> is the manscaped? Do you do it at like Fin zero? Extra large. What grade yeah, is your zero? Pubic? So it just leaves like a very uh, bristly. Oh, what about a nick, like though? stubble? Yeah, sounds itchy as fuck. Oh, that doesn't sound comfortable at all. Also, right. you wouldn't want that. It'd be like I, I once um, uh, was courting a girl with uh, who who didn't get rid of Caught it. Caught in a girl? Courting a girl. Courting. But I can understand uh, the trouble you had. Um, <laughs> I was once courting a girl, dating, and she had stubble, like it was, she'd cut it to a length that it was stubble. And I felt like I was getting yeah, my oh, dad yeah. every time I was yeah, yeah, going down there. on her. It's either, it's either smooth or oh, let, yeah. let a bit of hair. Yeah. You don't want the like five o'clock shadow on a pum pum. Oh. That's well, going to be some I've friction. I've had no complaints, that. mate. No, I mean, but you've not got a vagina that we're talking about. I no, mean, but it's still, I, I would still be worried about that. Were I to um, suck a dick, suck your cock, uh, my biggest problem would be <laughs> would uh, it? the, the stubbly. No, that would be the biggest problem. If he'd scrubbed it first, I'd have no truck. And as we discussed in the first half, I dove me dick. Dove it? With dove soap. Yeah, but not a bar. Were you thinking bar right then? Were uh, you thinking bar of soap? Mentally. Well, I think the verb to dove, like, it implies a bar. Thank How you. I use a dove, like, Alfie. shower gel cream thing. One of my favourite guests for a long time. Alfie, um, do you wash your legs in the shower? Uh, no, I'm white. <laughs> Told you it was a race thing. Told you before. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Asians and black people wash them. Oh, I didn't Members know. Members of the BIPOC community, Adam means. He does apologise. <laughs> um, Members of the what community? BIPOC. What's that? I, I actually don't know what it stands for. It's just one of the new... Uh, is that replaced Shibboleths. BAME? Sorry? Yes. BAME's offensive now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Black and minority. And what else is offensive? Um, yeah. This no. podcast a lot of oh, the time. Okay. The any yawning more? Caucasian. <laughs> Have we got any more? <laughs> One more. Do we still play those games where you have to be like a bus driver from Inverness? <laughs> oh, do you we, want to? We, do you want to do that again? <laughs> well, I was asking if you had. Oh, we, we haven't can, done that for so long. We can, but let's just make it accent and per person. Because uh, I think yeah. it got a bit random when, like, Adam started adding way too many layers, like, and they've just lost the mother. <laughs> no, that was so great. It was like, it was a huge, like... That's what it, made it better. After that's every single one, I few went to go, and other people sat there going, I cannot do this. Well, Alfie's, so Alfie's an actor as well. An Alfie actor? can do it. Do you call me an actor. You, you are a comic and an actor, not a comic actor. Good comic safe. and an Good. actor. You're an actor I'm a doing just, gigs, aren't yeah. you? You know? Okay, so let's go with Paraguayan window cleaner who is here, trapped in a well because we he's trying to save a stranger's dog. Oh, no, okay. Oh, um, I am... Ed, help me, I'm in a well. Uh, there was a poochie down here, a tiny little poochie, so, so vulnerable. <laughs> And I wanted to, he was dirty, and the pooch, I, and a, a, a dog is a, a companion of um, of man in the purest form evolved to be together. And I was just lonely for Pal. Uh, Pal is where He's I, doing I, I the spent well. some time. He's actually doing the well. <laughs> Fucking genius. I didn't incorporate window cleaner. I apologize. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, but I, I knew he was a window cleaner. From what you said, he sounded like you. salt of the earth, didn't he? Yeah, like he, he was. Uh, yeah, he sounded working class. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, mm. yeah. Oh my god. Um, uh, sorry, were you going to do a have a word? I didn't mean to. I just yeah. was asking if that was still a thing. One more. Go on. Hi, lids. I need you to have a word with me. Me and my wife of two years, ten years to get. Me and my wife of two years have been together ten years, have two kids, and we have lost our libido. I'm tired most nights, and so is she. I've forgotten how to initiate it nowadays. Can you recommend how to get the spark back? Cheers, Em. And we're going to go to Alfred on this one. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Um, I'd recommend uh, investing in perhaps uh, uh, some uh, Viagra, uh, which I found uh, taken recreation rec recreationally uh, can be a real uh, laugh. Um, I used it uh, mainly when I was a single man, uh, because I did feel uh, like it uh, lent, uh, or, or it was very helpful. I'm, I don't know if any, either of you have had uh, casual sex a lot whilst sober, but it's um, a harrowing and uh, vile thing to do, in my opinion. 
and uh, it's much better at being steaming drunk. But being steaming drunk can often lead to uh, flaccidity in the uh, cock department. There's a fine balance. There's like a, a levels to get your confidence and, and also... Exactly. If you're too mortal, there's But well. also, too sober, and you're all too in your own head about it. But um, if you are uh, soused, uh, then you can be up uh, for even the most... Um, uh, uh, you know, in, in engaging and uh, exotic of times with a perfect stranger, I to a limit. Can you? Can you? You'd have to both take it though, wouldn't you? Because if he, if uh, if your man takes it, yeah, he's like, I need to initiate it. He is takes that a woman it. who sent that in? No, that's a guy. All oh, right, uh, waits till he's got a hard on and then walks in, stonker, and she's like, I just don't want to. And what's he going to do? Oh, Just I suppose, yes, we have lost our libido. Uh, yeah. So it's a team she's effort to get it right. Libido. Yeah, I don't know what to do about... I just, I mean, having a bit of fun with Viagra. I mean, also, it doesn't just... You don't, your cock doesn't just... Have you not, neither of you done it? No. I your have, yeah, I have. It doesn't shoot up. I have. Um, it just, it, fe- it, it didn't shoot, shoot you up, but it felt like it never shot down. It was a long time going. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. A key, had enough now, go away. Really? So I didn't really know what it did, Viagra. I knew it just... I, you cock it off for ages. So, when you've had it, do you come and then it stays up and you can then just come again? It's just like everything to an extreme. So, you can come and then it sort of uh, will shut down to uh, sort of a, a semi type capabilities. And then, within a quite a brief period of time, it's back up and in full working order and uh, ready to go again. That's and Adam's dick anyway. Though, you really it? have to. Uh, but you you do need to be uh, a, a, a very very um, able in the cardiovascular department to uh, achieve your second third fourth uh, right. orgasms. So if you're a big lad, you're out of shape, and you're absolutely fucking steaming, don't double drop Viagra and expect to be like three don't, bags. Don't in. double drop it. <laughs> Just don't double drop it. Yeah. Um, the second dick grows. Unless like. you are like, in, unless you're you are granddad. Uh, don't just don't trouble drop it. I always um, think sometimes with the old when the romance is gone, you need to get out of your environment that people don't do. If you've got two kids and your home life and you've been bitching about the recycling and the, the washing up and you've been like just moaning at each other like, well, you didn't you should have get the bins out quicker. Like just book a room away and go for dinner and have some drinks and get the kids take and just go to a hotel. And if it and, doesn't happen there. That's when you need. I honestly a think combo when people are like, oh, we're not really having sex at home. You're like, home's not the sexiest place. Oh, no, especially when, when you're, you're running a time family. And it's like you, I mean, I was having sex with my partner uh, recently, and all I could hear from the other room was Max and Ruby, <laughs> da, 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 da. Ruby and Max, Max and Ruby. And trying to pl- oh, run it really hard to come with Max and Ruby <laughs> blaring in the other room. But now, uh, one thing that increases the libido I found, or at least it has increased my libido, is the fact that Jessie's, uh, uh, you know, breastfeeding and uh, has recently been pregnant. Her body's changed I- entirely, and it's like if you'd look at her like from the neck down, it's like fucking somebody else. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is so pregnant. I don't know if I'm allowed to laugh at that. Why? Um, it's very good. Uh, pregnancy sex is a, is a is a real treat. Um, Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Last week's guest, Simon Wozniak, I know for a fact that he is very attracted to pregnant women. I think it's pretty sexy. I think the reality is that uh, it's a bit, um, there's other things going on. Discomfort, annoyance. Like in the porn, the prego porn, like I can say, oh my God, she's pregnant and she's really into it. In reality, I can't just, it's a very weird combination to have a, a wife in the third trimester who is horny and angry at you for doing mm. this to her. It was just a lot of reality. I just this didn't happen this time. We've sort of not gone there. But uh, when uh, Laura was pregnant with Etta, there was one time when she was like, "We're having sex now," and I was like, "Okay." And yeah. She just seemed irritated the whole time, and was pregnant and beautiful, but frightening. Was she having sex because she had the physiological kind of hormonal yes. need? Yes, I think okay. so. Okay, it wasn't yeah. just like. We need to have sex because that's no, what they do in she, relationships. She felt it. Oh, great! But then it, it was just frustrating because it's that third trimester. The end of the road is it's, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Mm. Uh, I just just get a hotel room, go for some drinks, not loads. Maybe you don't need Viagra. What do you get? Porn together? 
Yeah, get the not the hotel porn though. Oh, no, 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 no. Like get up a you know watch something nice that women like too, like Belisa House or a gangbang. Yeah, what kind of porn should you watch, Adam? What would you recommend for not, a couple? Not farm for a couple love. to get them going again. Depends what they're into, innit? Well, yeah. Well, right what? now they're not into anything. By the sounds of it, yeah, you need to awaken a libido. What would you? What would be your entry level libido awakener? So it can't be too extreme because you're not trying to. It's an entry level. Um, entry level, but enlivening. Um, Why are we all looking at Adam for a porn <laughs> genre? This is the weirdest moment. Like, I just like, you know, entry level assumes that they don't watch it a lot anyway. And if they've lost the libido, I imagine he is watching porn because he still wants to spaff. So he's still... <laughs> <laughs> he, he's behind there. Welcome to Adam's dictionary of scouts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you need to kick it up a nickel. You and she's probably like, I reckon they go like, you know, th- there's a girl I've been with who was into porn, and she really loved big black dicks coming in a blonde woman's vagina. That's all she wanted to watch. <laughs> That's, like, genuinely. Take us home, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> genuinely. Like, I asked, that's a direct quote, by the way. Almost. She was like, I want to watch porn together. And I went, what do, you, what do you like to watch? And she said, literally, big black dicks <laughs> coming inside a blonde woman. And you didn't marry her. <laughs> Damn, homie. You let a good one go. Mm. Yeah. I so, don't think... That's the entry level that this guy is going to have work for him, <laughs> lad. Darling, Adam Rowe has said. Come to the studio for a second. I've got something I want to show you. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't, don't bring Alice. No. Um. <laughs> you never know. Like maybe you know, whatever she's into. Because I imagine, let's say she watches porn as well, just for the sake of it. Um, find out what she's into. And then just go like one level up from that so it's a turn on. So if sh- <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Aye, the whole watching porn. It's just like with a partner. That's a that's a private time. That's a private time. I just I've never done it, but I th- I've uh, I've heard it works. For some. For some. First time I did it, the girl just cried. I don't think she'd never watched porn before. Fuck so when man. I was young, she was like, I'd like to. And we put some on and she was like, it just doesn't seem nice for her. I was like, I don't think this was for you. Yeah. It and it was like the wrong sort of... It was gen- gentle. Did she know it, her? It wasn't... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Claire from school. <laughs> <laughs> What's she doing in LA? <laughs> just fucking right. So I think that is a natural end point for what has been an absolute roller coaster of a podcast. I'd like to thank our colleague and friend, Alfie Brown. Thank you, man. Uh, Eddie Brimson, who was on just a few episodes ago and was an absolute fan favourite, has brought out the book that we were talking about, which is about football violence and um, some of the hooligan stuff that he was involved in when he was young. It's called Naughty Boy. So go and get Eddie Brimson's book, Naughty Boy. It's at Eddie Brimson on Twitter. I also did uh, Mixtapes with Mike, uh, a podcast with a comedian uh, down in the Midlands where he plays 10 songs that I pick and we talk through them. So check out Mixtapes with Mike. It was really fun to do. And our big fat quiz. What's it called? The, what did you call it? The big Sensei stupid Carl's quiz. stupid fucking quiz. Sensei Carl's stupid fucking quiz went live on Friday and we plug our Patreon for very good reason. Uh, we're really proud of it. We think it's a great deal and occasionally we do extra episodes if you love this podcast and you're thinking well i can't see the patreon's going to be really good value it's amazing and this that landed on friday is a a real special one-off isn't it carl it is it is a it's a three hour (laughs) quiz based spectacular and it is worth the three pound a month alone yeah you can just play it with your mates at home it's dead they're good it's funny we really enjoyed filming it and i just want to plug me special one more time my special club comic which is on youtube adam road club comic search that it'll come up I am 2,337 views away from hitting 100K. And, and I've watched that several times, so two of those are mine, and that is uh, fantastic. Thank I've you, mate. It. And I know it's arbitrary, but 100K just seems... it's. Something Let's I get him there. Yes. He's fucking exceptional. He made it himself. Support the King Lid. Support us. And uh, if he loves it, if we get to 100K, he'll let us milk him. No. 
Uh, and we got a new line of merch coming. And once that comes, I imagine the old merch will be unavailable. So if you've seen any of the merch that's on sale at the minute and you haven't quite bought it yet, go and get that done now at haveawaypod.com because it won't be available for very much longer. We've got some new thing coming. Okay, thanks very much for coming in, Alfred. Thanks so much for having me. A pleasure. It's a pleasure as always. Bye for Bye for